Ruth's words were like salt in an open wound, so Ophelia decided to speak with her father directly. Dad, I want to ask you something, Ophelia said. Richard grew slightly uneasy when he saw his daughter's expression. Ophelia's eyes were filled with tears. Dad, do my mother and I mean nothing to you? Richard's expression changed. His face showed a visible shift from embarrassment to anger. When Richard saw the questioning in Ophelia's eyes, he slammed his hand on the table in front of him. Ophelia, do you think you're the parent here? Dare you talk to me like that? He shouted. Ophelia closed her eyes, and tears fell down her face. Wasn't the answer obvious? Richard felt a bit surprised at himself when he slapped the table. What happened to me just now, he wondered. Ophelia, hey. Richard didn't know what he should say either. Ophelia shook her head. I already know, she said. But for now, she wouldn't give in. Ophelia finally understood that some people were born to belittle others. Although Richard felt a little guilty, he still tried to cover for himself. Daddy is doing this for your own good. You've been married to Damon for two years. You're ready to have children. It's good for both of you. Damon will certainly be more restrained after having a child. He won't fool around so much. Ophelia reached up to wipe away her tears. Dad, you've known that he's been messing around? You want me to endure that? Richard frowned. You need to keep Damon around. No matter what, the Hill family cannot do without the support of the Hoffmans. Do you understand? He threatened. It's still about the Hill family, Ophelia whispered. What am I to you? Richard was speechless. The phrase, you are my daughter, was stuck in his throat like a fishbone. Ophelia tightened her grip. If they knew the hidden secrets of the Hoffman family, what would happen then? After all, she was just a tool in this game. Dad, I'm tired. I'm leaving. Ophelia had heard enough. Richard also knew the conversation had run its course, so he didn't say much and let Ophelia go. After she left the office, Ophelia really didn't know where she was going and felt like there was no place for her to go in the entirety of New York City. After a moment of contemplation, Ophelia started walking. When she finally came out of her trance, she was home. Xavier's home. Ophelia didn't know how long she'd been walking around outside. By the time she got home, she saw lights on in the house. She clearly remembered that when she left that morning, she'd locked it. Could it be? Ophelia opened the door slowly and peeked inside. She took a deep breath and tightened her grip on the phone. If anything happened, she'd call the police. Ophelia walked slowly through the door and then tiptoed into the house. She stopped in her tracks. There didn't seem to be anything out of place in the house. It didn't seem like there was a thief. When she saw a phone sitting on the coffee table, her eyes lit up. Could it be? You're back? A voice startled her. The voice came from upstairs. Ophelia raised her head and met Xavier's gaze. Their gazes met, and it was like the air was sucked out of the room. Ophelia was so excited that she couldn't form a single sentence. You... Xavier smirked. Are you surprised? He asked. Ophelia nodded as Xavier walked up to her. Didn't you say you'd be a few days late? She asked him. My work finished early, Xavier said lightly. Ophelia's heart leaped. While she was still lost in thought, Xavier lifted a hand to Ophelia's face. He lowered his head and carefully examined her. His eyebrows knitted together. Have you been crying? He asked. Ophelia was stunned for a moment, then stretched out her hand to push Xavier away, but he easily grabbed her arm and pulled her securely into his embrace. Ophelia's body stiffened. She blushed and her heart raced. Who upset you? Xavier's voice was clear. Anyone listening carefully would hear the love in his tone. Ophelia felt a sense of safety with Xavier. She put her arms around him and buried her head in his chest. Can I stay like this for a while? Ophelia's voice was soft. Xavier hugged her even more tightly. Ophelia pressed her head against him, listening to his steady, powerful heartbeat. Ophelia gradually closed her eyes. I'm having a bad day today, she said. But it's better now, because you're here. Xavier sighed. 
Ophelia, are you tired? Yeah. Ophelia replied weakly. Xavier picked her up without saying a word. Ophelia yelped, not expecting Xavier to act like this. She looked at the man holding her. This was her husband. Ophelia's heart soared. Could it be that he was a touch of light in her tragic life? Under Ophelia's gaze, Xavier's throat bobbed. His voice was a little hoarse as he said, If you keep looking at me like that, I won't be able to control myself. Ophelia obviously didn't understand him. Hmm? She asked. Ophelia, I want you. Xavier whispered into her ear. Ophelia tensed. She saw the light reflected in Xavier's blue-gray eyes. She also saw herself in those eyes. Was this shy woman really her? Xavier carried Ophelia into the room and gently sat her down on the bed. Ophelia immediately opened her mouth. Uh, about that. She wanted to say she wasn't ready. Xavier placed a kiss on Ophelia's forehead and said, I'm going to take a shower. She watched Xavier walk into the bathroom with a towel in his hand and Ophelia felt her entire body getting hot. When Xavier finished his shower, he saw a pair of men's pajamas folded and placed on the bed. The corner of his mouth curved into a faint smile. He looked around, didn't see Ophelia. Xavier put on his clothes and left the room. Ophelia? he called. I'm in the kitchen, she replied. Xavier walked into the kitchen and looked at his wife, busy putting ingredients together. His heart softened. It had never occurred to him that there would ever be a woman willing to wash her hands and make a meal for him. Love was in the air for Ophelia and Xavier. Would their relationship endure the test of time? Xavier walked up behind Ophelia and wrapped his arms around her. Ophelia was surprised. She relaxed into him and inhaled his fresh mint fragrance. Is it done? He asked. Oh. Ophelia stuttered. Xavier's magnetic voice was so alluring, and he smelled so good that her breath hitched. Ophelia spoke, but her voice was clearly unstable. I, I was hungry, so I cooked noodles. Y you want some? Xavier looked at the noodles in the pot. He let go of Ophelia and took the spatula from her hand. Let me do it, he said. When Ophelia stepped back, she noticed that Xavier's actions were skillful. She stood quietly to one side, admiring the graceful man. A man who did things seriously was handsome, but a man who cooked seriously was an absolute killer. Ophelia blinked as she looked at the noodles. A burst of fragrance wafted towards her. Her stomach growled. You can cook? Ophelia exclaimed. Xavier raised his eyebrows and said with a smile, Try it. Let's see if it tastes good. Ophelia picked up the chopsticks and took a bite. Her eyes lit up as she almost moaned. Delicious! Sit down and eat. After receiving a satisfactory reply, Xavier was in a good mood. Ophelia sat down and started to eat her fill. With such a delicious bowl of food in front of her, she really didn't care about the beautiful man next to her. Xavier pulled out a chair and sat opposite her. Ophelia ate half a bowl of noodles before she saw Xavier looking at her. You don't want any? I'm not hungry. I had takeout before you got home, Xavier answered. Ophelia slowed her eating. I was just buffing my face, she said with a chuckle. Xavier looked at Ophelia gently and said, I'm happy when I see you eating so happily. Ophelia understood. Her face heated and she said again, Thank you. I'll cook for you when I have time in the future, he said. Ophelia put down her chopsticks. Why do you cook when you can ask someone to make things for you? Xavier smiled, but didn't say anything. Xavier, is there anything you want to ask me that you don't know? Ophelia asked. Hearing Ophelia call him Xavier made his heart skip a beat. This was the first time that his name was so pleasant to hear. Ophelia was also surprised that she called Xavier by his name so naturally. She couldn't help but feel embarrassed. After Xavier reacted, he looked at Ophelia with a smile. It's nice to hear that. That's how it should be from now on, he said. Ophelia looked shy when he spoke. She picked up her dishes and rushed into the kitchen. Xavier liked and embarrassed Ophelia even more, so he just watched her escape. After Ophelia took a shower, she noticed Xavier wasn't in the bedroom. 
She walked out of the room and saw that the light in the study was on. So as not to disturb his work, Ophelia laid down alone. She was so tired that she fell asleep almost immediately. Half awake, Ophelia felt movement in her bed, but she couldn't keep her eyes open. Xavier pulled Ophelia into his arms. He lowered his head and tenderly looked at her sleeping face. He reached out his hand and gently brushed her hair from her face. Sleep, he whispered. You'll be fine after you sleep for a while. Xavier knew what had happened to Ophelia today. His gentleness faded away and was replaced with anger as he thought about it. It seemed that it was about time for him to introduce himself. As though she could feel Xavier's anger, Ophelia tensed in her sleep. Xavier took a breath and relaxed. He hugged Ophelia and closed his eyes. Soon, he also fell asleep. Their warm bed painted a lovely picture, while across town another apartment felt colder than a snowstorm. Damon stood at the window of his apartment with a glass of wine in his hand. If it wasn't for the fact that his family kept asking him where Ophelia was, he wouldn't have cared to find her. It was better if he didn't search for her. But after he'd searched for a while, he'd realized that there'd been no news from Ophelia over the past few days. She had vanished from the face of the earth. She wouldn't be at the Hill family home, nor would she be in the place she lived previously, much less the Hoffman family manor. She was. Where was she going? Damon frowned. Why was he suddenly thinking of this boring woman? After a moment of frustration, Damon picked up his phone and made a call to a woman. Ophelia was about to move when she noticed that there was someone beside her. She felt like she'd been struck by lightning. What was going on? Ophelia slowly remembered last night and that she'd slept with Xavier. It was her first time looking at Xavier at such a close distance. She had to admit that this man was so handsome that even God would be angry with him. Dark eyelashes, a strong nose, and bold eyebrows combined into perfection. Ophelia quietly outlined Xavier's facial features with her hand. The more she looked, the more jealous she felt. His skin was exceptionally good as well. Ophelia started to feel inferior. Compared to him, she was nothing special. With a sigh, Ophelia dwelled on her own appearance. She blinked at the pair of blue-gray eyes as they opened slowly. Xavier's tired morning voice sounded in her ears. What are you sighing for so early in the morning? I'm jealous, Ophelia replied. Xavier laughed and Ophelia finally reacted. She was embarrassed and wanted to turn around, but found herself held fast by Xavier's strong arms. Ophelia kept her head down, not daring to look at him. She heard him laugh. Then he said, Wife, how are you going to compensate me? Compensation? She squeaked. After staring so long at me in the morning, shouldn't you give me a tip? He said with a chuckle. Ophelia was shame. She'd been caught gawking. Would Ophelia ever tell Damon about Xavier? And what would happen if Damon learned about Ophelia's recent marriage? Flirting lingered as the two of them got ready for their day. As Ophelia got ready to leave, Xavier said, I'll drop you off. Ophelia was stunned. You don't have to work today? It's rest. Ophelia walked to the door. Can rest at home today. I'll go to work. But Xavier had already reached the door. It's only right that a husband drives his wife. Xavier didn't give Ophelia a chance to refute his words as he opened the door. Ophelia could only follow behind him. When Ophelia got in the car, Xavier looked at her. Do you truly enjoy wearing these kinds of clothes? Xavier said. Ophelia glanced at her clothes. Yes. Yeah. Is that all right? You're so serious. If you could choose a variety of colors, you'd be happier and more comfortable. Ophelia rarely dressed herself up. Xavier saw through Ophelia's thoughts and said, You have to love yourself a little more. Xavier brought Ophelia to the entrance of the Hillcrest building. He was very considerate and always seemed to know what Ophelia was thinking about. Can we park here? He asked. Yep, Ophelia nodded. Don't forget to let me know when you're about to get off. Call me if you need anything. I'll pick you up after work, Xavier said. Ophelia was in a good mood, and her tone was cheerful as well. All right. Ophelia got out of the car and waved at Xavier. Drive carefully. Xavier nodded and then drove away. After she watched Xavier leave, Ophelia raised her head and looked at the building in front of her. 
She took a deep breath and started walking, but she didn't notice the man staring at her from a short distance away. As Ophelia almost reached the Hillcrest entrance, a Ferrari stopped beside her. Ophelia knew who owned the car. Her good mood from before held strong regardless. Damon stepped out of the car wearing an expensive-looking pair of sunglasses. What? Don't remember me? Damon said. Ophelia glanced at Damon and asked, Why are you here? Damon's face was full of disdain. When he thought about Ophelia stepping out of that black land rope, his expression changed. You don't seem happy to see me. Damon walked to Ophelia's side. Ophelia, don't forget one thing. We might be divorced, but we're still a couple to the outside world. You'd better not let the cat out of the bag. Ophelia clenched her fist tightly. Damon, stop threatening me, she shouted. Damon smiled with satisfaction and walked past Ophelia into the building. Ophelia smelled a woman's perfume. She looked at Damon's back and figured it must have been his flavor of the week. The scene from Emily's perspective was infuriating. As expected, Ophelia still hadn't given up on Damon. She had to think of something. Ophelia was indeed her nemesis. She would have to do something to get rid of the thorn in her side. When Ophelia returned to her office, she found Damon casually sitting in her seat. What are you doing here? Ophelia asked. What is it? Can't I sit in my wife's seat for a bit? Damon asked. Don't forget that I'm also one of the shareholders in Hillcrest, so you better be a little nicer to me. It was Damon's first time seeing an angry Ophelia, but he didn't react. Ophelia, I realize that you've changed, Damon said with a smile. I always thought you didn't have the capacity for anger. You've changed a lot since we divorced. It looks good on you. Ophelia put her bag on her desk. Damon, if you have nothing else to do, please leave. I need to work, she said. Damon stood up and walked over to Ophelia. Why didn't you pick up my call the other day? He asked. When Ophelia didn't answer, Damon got angry. Judging from her appearance and the car that had just driven her to work, it was easy to come to a conclusion. Damon's stare made Ophelia uncomfortable, so she took a step back. Damon saw Ophelia's desire to put space between them, so he grabbed her. Why aren't you answering? Ophelia refused Damon's contact and shouted, Me, you really have a new man already? Damon was relentless. Ophelia pushed him away and said, Damon, we no longer have to do with one another. We're not related, but in the eyes of our families, we're still husband and wife, Damon said proudly. Dropped you off today. Ophelia was shocked. He'd been watching her earlier? Ophelia came up with an excuse, not wanting to throw Xavier under the bus. That was Eric Stewart's car. Damon was still in disbelief. Which one could Eric afford such a good car? He was a family doctor. He definitely couldn't. Although that car was low-key, it was still a luxury price and wasn't cheap. Two days ago, something happened at Jane's place, Ophelia said carefully. Damon released Ophelia and said, Jane's husband is cheating, so you should advise her to divorce. She was surprised that Damon knew. How did you know? she asked. When I went to the country club the other day, I saw him carrying a woman in his arms, Damon recalled. And then I passed the room they were in and heard them doing things a married man probably shouldn't be doing. Ophelia frowned. She really didn't expect an honest man like Harris would do such a thing. Ophelia, the more honest a man is, the easier it is for him to be in trouble, Damon said. She asked, then what about a man like you? Damon raised his eyebrows. He hadn't expected Ophelia to ask him that. What's more, he couldn't answer her either. Ophelia had become feisty in front of Damon's eyes. Would he be able to find the real truth of her newfound confidence? Ophelia had expected Damon's reaction. So instead of continuing the subject, she said, I'm getting back to work. Damon raised his head and looked at Ophelia. His eyes looked slightly hurt. Ophelia, what kind of man do you really think I am? He asked. Ophelia's hand froze on her chin. The question came too suddenly. It wasn't hard for her to answer, but right now, she couldn't say it. You can't answer it either? Damon was questioning everything he'd said. Ophelia raised her eyes and looked at Damon standing in front of her. You're right about one thing, 
It's better for both of us that we got divorced. Her words didn't have much killing power, but when Damon heard it, he felt strange. Had the beautiful memories of his past been filtered out? Was he saying that she had been released, and it was a relief to no longer be entangled with him? Damon sneered. Ophelia, I was wrong about you, he said. Two years ago, you would have killed to marry me, but now you're avoiding me like plague. I hope this new man is worth it. Ophelia opened her mouth to explain, but Damon had already slammed the door and walked out. What? You so angry, she shouted at the closed door. Ophelia didn't understand, so she just sat down to work. An hour later, Damon returned to Ophelia's office. She looked at his tall figure standing at her door. She quickly withdrew her gaze and didn't pay any attention to him. It was the first time that Damon Hoffman had been disregarded by someone in such a way, and that someone was his unremarkable ex-wife. He'd been standing there for a while, but when he saw how focused she was, Damon felt that she was rather charming. Seen that she had angered him to the point of losing his mind. Damon walked in. I just came to tell you one thing, he growled. The day after tomorrow is my mother's birthday. Remember to get there early to help. Ophelia put down the pen in her hand. Aren't there a lot of other people who can help at home? What is it, Ophelia? You're so independent now that you don't care about your family? Damon said angrily. Ophelia pondered for a moment. The day after tomorrow, then, she placated. My mom asked for you to be there today. Ophelia frowned. Today? Are you sure? She asked. Ophelia hadn't forgotten Helen's attitude towards her. Had she changed since Ophelia had last seen her? They needed her to help? Damon wouldn't make use of the situation to give himself credit, would he? When Damon saw Ophelia's expression, he knew she was analyzing the situation. Grandpa wants to see you too. Damon had no choice but to use his grandfather. If any part of the Hoffman family was worth reminiscing about, then it would have been the old man, Elijah Hoffman. He had always been nice to Ophelia, and sometimes he even helped her out. But in the past few years, the old man's health hadn't been great. During the last family reunion, Ophelia heard Helen saying that his heart was troubled. Elijah was the only son of his generation of Hoffmans, and his wife had passed away years ago. It had always been Robert and Helen taking care of him. Robert and Helen Hoffman had three children, eldest son Andrew, second son Damon, and a younger daughter Madeline. For some reason, Helen only ever showed maternal love to Andrew and Madeline. It was strange to think that she didn't care about Damon at all. Ophelia had eventually heard from some servants that Damon might not be Helen's biological son. In that case, it made sense that she didn't like Damon. There was no shortage of secrets in the Hoffman family. This was just a fraction of what Ophelia noticed after she got married. New York City's Hoffman family looked bright and beautiful on the surface, with both power and influence. But behind the scenes, the Hoffman family were complicated, and each of them had secrets to hide. Damon seemed to know his own possession at home, so he used the excuse of marriage to move out of the Hoffman family house. Ophelia agreed to the marriage, and after learning about it, Elijah gave Damon and Ophelia a villa as a wedding present. After marriage, Damon rarely came home, while Ophelia basically lived there alone. Ophelia could never ignore Elijah. Grandpa, you mean it? she asked. Yes, if you don't believe me, you can just call and ask, Damon answered. Ophelia looked at the time. I have some things scheduled for today. I'll go after work tomorrow. Damon turned around and left without saying anything else. After walking no more than a few steps, he met Emily. Emily's eyes lit up when she saw Damon. She ran over in her high heels. Damon, why are you here? Her tone was intimate, and everyone looked at them. Emily's voice was loud. Even Ophelia, sitting in her office, heard it. Damon noticed the attention and was annoyed. Emily was brainless sometimes. Damon stared at Emily and intentionally coughed a few times to alert her to the situation. Emily understood and put down the hand that was reaching for him. She called out in a not-so-convincing tone. Brother-in-law! Yes, Damon nodded. Emily looked behind Damon, and sure enough, he'd just come out of that woman's office. She ground her teeth. Looking for my sister? She asked. Yes, and I found her, Damon answered. You have to go. Damon left without waiting for Emily's reply. Emily bit her lip as she watched Damon leave. When would Damon announce his divorce from Ophelia? The more she thought about it, the more enraged she became. She chased him to the parking lot, 
where she shouted after him. Simon, wait a minute. Damon stopped and turned around to see Emily rushing towards him. She wrapped her arms around his neck and started to kiss him. After a few seconds, Damon pushed Emily away. What are you doing? He asked as his eyes darted around for witnesses. Damon, I love you. What are you going to announce you divorced from Ophelia? Emily pouted and asked. Don't you miss me at all? I see you every day. I miss that. I know you were happy. So was I. You and Ophelia don't have that. Damon narrowed his eyes and looked at Emily. I still have something to do, he said. Damon, when are you going to marry me? Emily asked in a low voice. That day, we didn't use protection, so maybe I... She trailed off. Damon's eyes flashed with a hint of viciousness. You didn't take anything afterwards? I... Uh... Emily hesitated. Of course she didn't take anything. She wanted to be pregnant with Damon's child. That was the only way to guarantee her marrying into the Hoffman family. Emily surely had played her card. What would happen if she truly was carrying Damon's child? Damon pushed Emily away with a fierce look in his eyes. You really are pregnant. You have to get rid of it, Damon said coldly. I don't want to have children right now. Emily was stunned. She took a few steps back with a blank look on her face. She'd never thought Damon would say something like that. Damon, why are you so cruel? She asked. Damon walked around Emily and opened his car door. I never agreed to this, he barked. Emily hugged her arms as she staggered back a few steps. As Damon drove away, Emily's tears fell. How could Damon treat her so cruelly? Could it be that his sweet words were all lies? Richard just happened to witness the scene as he returned from his lunch. He frowned at Emily, who was crying not far away. Sour feeling rose in his heart. His eldest daughter married Damon, and all she got was an empty house to live in. Now his second daughter was actually entangled with him. What kind of man was he? The more Richard thought about it, the angrier he got. He clenched his jaw. He turned around and walked out of the parking lot. Richard felt pressure on his chest. If Emily was really pregnant with Damon's child, then he'd definitely have to give an explanation to the Hoffman family. After all, they couldn't afford to lose their connection to them. Xavier sat in front of his computer on a video conference. At conference, he received a video message on his cell phone. Xavier glanced briefly at it and frowned. What was going on? From his computer, Xavier's friend Nick Francis said, Xavier, what are you looking at? You look angry. Xavier put his phone away. It's fine, he said. Let's continue. Nick laughed. <laughs> That's a lie. Something must have happened. It wouldn't happen if you were related to that cute little wife of yours, would it? Xavier couldn't hide anything from Nick. It might be. Nick put away his smile and straightened his face. Xavier, he said, you should remember the purpose of your return to New York. Xavier leaned back in his chair. I remember, he said. If you want to get married, I'm not against it, Nick said calmly. But you married a married woman. With your status, Xavier, you could have anyone if you chose her. Are you listening to me? Xavier didn't like hearing anyone say that Ophelia was a bad choice. Enough! If you have nothing else to say, then shut it down! Nick saw that Xavier was growing angry, so he kindly reminded him. Xavier, I'm just worried about you, okay? Don't misunderstand me. Xavier's eyes flickered. In fact, neither of them knew anything about Ophelia. I know, he conceded. I'm just worried you didn't really think it through. You really do like Ophelia, right? I mean, yesterday you ended your trip to New Jersey early just to rush back for her. Nick was also worried about Xavier's focus. Xavier didn't answer, and his gaze fell to his phone. New Jersey doesn't matter. You're enough, Xavier said finally. Nick scoffed. Xavier cut off the conference. He looked at the video on his phone again. So Damon and Emily had this kind of relationship. If Ophelia knew, what would her reaction be? Xavier was annoyed. He felt a headache coming on. He realized that Ophelia was about to get off work. Xavier packed up and prepared to pick her up from the office. When he arrived at the Hillcrest building, Xavier gave Ophelia a call. I'm here, he said. 
Wait just a moment. I'll be right down. After the call ended, Ophelia picked up her belongings. She didn't want to keep Xavier waiting. Before she reached the elevator, Ophelia saw Emily's red heels walking out of Richard's office. She glared at Ophelia. The hatred in her eyes had deepened. Ophelia was confused. She hadn't even offended her today. Why did she hate her so much? Ophelia didn't think too much about it. She pressed the button for the elevator and went downstairs. Ophelia spotted the familiar Land Rover parked on the opposite side of the road. She looked around to make sure there were no cars before she crossed over. Upon reaching the window, Ophelia lowered her head. The car window rolled down, and Xavier's peerless face materialized in front of Ophelia. Giddy, he urged. Ophelia nodded and opened the car door. She got in, and Xavier leaned over to help her buckle her seatbelt. Ophelia blushed. Although she wasn't used to it, she didn't reject such contact. On the contrary, she was looking forward to it. So, where are we going? she asked. Xavier smiled and started the car. He only said one sentence. I'm taking you to see someone. Ophelia didn't expect Xavier to take her to see friends. She looked at herself in the suit she was wearing, which seemed out of place. Can I wear this? Ophelia said. Xavier looked at her thoughtfully and said, I don't think she would mind. Ophelia didn't know who the she Xavier was referring to was. Xavier drove to the cemetery. Only then did Ophelia realize the person Xavier wanted her to meet wasn't alive. Xavier parked the car and got out first. Ophelia tidied herself up before she got out of the car. Xavier walked to a flower shop not far away and bought a bunch of fresh lilies. Ophelia guessed the person they were going to meet was important to him. Xavier returned with the lilies. Let's go, he chirped. Xavier, are you sure about this? Ophelia was slightly nervous. Xavier reached out and tucked a piece of Ophelia's hair behind her ears. I'm sure. Ophelia was nervous until Xavier stretched out his hand. Ophelia paused for a moment, but moved forward to grab it. Xavier held Ophelia's hand tightly and led her into the cemetery. They arrived at the gravestone, and Ophelia saw the photograph on it. <laughs> she started. My mom. Xavier let go of Ophelia's hand, then bent down to place the lilies in front of the stone. Ophelia bowed towards the tombstone. Mom, I brought my wife to see you today. Xavier's magnetic voice sounded. This is my wife, Ophelia. He gestured at Ophelia. Ophelia, this is my mother. He introduced her. Ophelia glanced at Xavier, and then at the photo on the tombstone. Xavier's mother was a beauty. The photo was gorgeous, but Ophelia was certain she was even more beautiful in life. Xavier actually looked a little bit like his mother. As expected, he inherited good genes. Hello, Mom. I'm Ophelia, she said softly with the kind of smile she could muster. Xavier put his arm around Ophelia. Mom, Ophelia and I have been married for a few days already. Don't worry, I'll be a good husband. We'll live well. He promised that he would not walk the path that his mother once walked. Xavier indeed had a sweet spot for Ophelia. What would transpire if Ophelia learned the true reason why Xavier chose to marry her? Ophelia was moved. Xavier probably had many more stories to share with her. Ophelia wasn't afraid of them. On the contrary, she wanted to know them all. She reached out and took Xavier's hand. Mom, I'll be a good wife. I'll take good care of him. Xavier held Ophelia's hand back and squeezed it firmly. My mother died when I was ten, Xavier continued. Well, we can, uh, unfortunately relate on that topic, Ophelia shared. Well, look at us, sympathizing with each other, Xavier said with a smile. Ophelia nodded. It was precisely because of this, a pain that Xavier understood. She had to work even harder to achieve her goals. When they left the cemetery, Ophelia told Xavier about going to see the Hoffman family the next day. Ophelia was uncertain as she looked at him. After just meeting Xavier's mother, she told him she wanted to go back to her husband's house. If she were Xavier, she definitely wouldn't agree. Do you want to go back? He asked earnestly. Ophelia shook her head. No, she said. But grandfather was kind to me, so I'd like to go back and see him. Xavier's bluish-gray eyes flashed with a hint of pain, and Ophelia regretted speaking. Then go back, he said carelessly. Ophelia was stunned. 
I happen to have a business to go on tomorrow. Xavier continued. Ophelia knew that she must have hurt Xavier's feelings. She'd only been married to him for a few days, but he'd always been transparent. She made up her mind then and there to announce her divorce from Damon as soon as possible. Only then did she stand beside Xavier, faithfully and loyally. Xavier, I'm sorry, she said. Xavier hugged her and whispered in her ear. Ophelia, don't make me wait too long. Never, Ophelia replied. The next morning after Xavier got up, he started to pack for his trip. Ophelia heard Xavier making a phone call from the study. He was speaking French. She was surprised to hear him speak in such a language. Ophelia had watched French dramas before, so she could only understand the greeting. Xavier turned around and saw Ophelia watching him. Xavier touched her hair. I can't drive you to work today. I can do it myself. If you need anything, remember to call me, Xavier responded. Ophelia nodded and couldn't help but ask, How many days will you be gone for this trip? I'll stay for a few days at least. Not sure about the actual length, Xavier answered. I'm going to see my grandfather. Grandfather? Yes, he's in France. Xavier didn't tell Ophelia that it would be the anniversary of his mother's death in a few days. Every year, Xavier went back to France for that day. I understand now. So, you were just on the phone with your grandpa, she asked. Yep. Someday I'll take you there to see them. Grandfather and grandmother are my only family now, he said. Ophelia felt a little pain in her heart when Xavier said that. It seems he was raised by his grandfather. It looks like he had a lot of stories to tell after all. Ophelia didn't expect she would meet Xavier's grandfather in such a way any time soon. Be careful, she murmured. Mm Mm-hmm, you too. Xavier touched Ophelia's face and walked out of the study. Ophelia walked Xavier to the door and saw a car waiting for him. I got a car to take me to the airport, Xavier said. Have a safe trip. Ophelia waved to the car as she watched it drive away. Nick looked at Ophelia through the rear mirror of the car. How are you going to explain this to your grandpa when you see him? I'm going to personally explain it to Grandfather. I don't think I'll mind, Xavier said. (laughs) I hope not. If Grandpa finds out who Ophelia is, be ready to face the music, his friend warned. Xavier didn't say anything. He quietly contacted the bodyguards who were protecting Ophelia from a distance, telling them to protect her well. Ophelia returned to the Hoffman family manor that day after work. As soon as she entered, she bumped into Madeline. Why are you here? Madeline said flatly to Ophelia. Ophelia was accustomed to this. Damon said that you all needed help to set up a surprise birthday party for tomorrow. Since my mother's birthday needs your involvement, it lowers the class of the party, Madeline said with resentment on her face. Andrew also arrived. He saw Ophelia standing at the door, and his tone turned cold. Sister-in-law is back. Yes, big brother, she greeted. Why are you standing in the doorway, Andrew said. Andrew ignored Ophelia as he walked straight past her. Just as Ophelia was about to leave, Madeline spoke again. Ophelia, when are you going to divorce Damon? Soon, Ophelia answered easily. Madeline called Damon to report back as Ophelia walked away. Soon, Damon arrived. Madeline and Damon were close, so she always talked to Damon about anything. Even though Andrew was her eldest brother, Madeline always felt a cold and detached feeling from him. Damon, you're back, she asked. Where is she? He asked without a greeting. Inside. Madeline was sitting on the front porch with a cup of coffee. Damon glanced at the door. And everyone else is here? Yep, Andrew just got here, Madeline answered truthfully. Damon thought about it for a while, then walked into the house. He didn't see Ophelia in the living room. She'd probably gone to visit Grandfather. Just as he was about to go upstairs, Helen came out of the kitchen. Mom? He said timidly. Helen looked at Damon coldly, nodded once, then left. Damon's heart still hurt. Ten years ago, in just one night, his mother's attitude towards him was forever changed. Damon walked towards Eliza's room. Just as he reached the door, he heard his grandpa's laugh. No way, is that true? Elijah asked her with a smile. Ophelia told Elijah jokes, as she always did. What surprise had the Hoffmans planned to give Ophelia and Helen's birthday bash? What was going to happen next?
Elijah looked at Ophelia as he held her hand. Ophelia, I know the last two years have been hard on you, he said. Ophelia shook her head. It's not hard at all. Elijah shook his head and said, Don't lie to Grandpa. I know almost everything about you and Damon. Grandfather, we're doing pretty well, she mumbled. Ophelia didn't want him to worry about her, so she didn't get into the details. Elijah had a kind expression. He sighed softly. I might be old. I'm not completely soft-headed. You hide your true feelings well, but I know it's really hard for you. Ophelia didn't say anything. She lowered her eyes. She didn't want her grandfather to see her emotions, nor did she want him to worry about her. In the two years that she'd spent with the Hoffman family, only Elijah was actually good to her. Elijah leaned back in his rocking chair. His gaze fell on Ophelia. It's possible. You should leave the Hoffman family. Ophelia raised her head to look at him with wide eyes. She didn't expect Elijah, the family's patriarch, to ever say such a thing. He saw Ophelia's surprise. He looked up at the ceiling, as if his thoughts were drifting away from him. If only Damon were here right now. His approval would help get Damon off of her back. It was an extravagant hope. Grandpa, she said faintly. Elijah gathered his thoughts when he heard her voice. He let go of Ophelia's hand. You're a good kid. I can see that even though you and Damon are married, you're not getting along well. Ophelia was stunned. She didn't expect Grandfather would know anything about the relationship between her and Damon. He's not a bad kid. It's just that he hasn't matured yet, Elijah continued. And neither have you. Ending a wrong marriage as soon as possible, while you're still young, is the best option. Don't be like Grandpa and end up with a life full of regrets. His words confused Ophelia. Wasn't his marriage to Grandmother a happy one? How could he say such a thing? Could there be much more to the story? Ophelia didn't know if she was tired or just truly stunned. He said to Ophelia, I'm a bit selfish. If you can come back, Grandpa hopes you can marry him. What? Who? Ophelia asked. Elijah was surprised by Ophelia's question. What had he just said? Ophelia was a little worried by his silence. Grandpa, what did you mean by that? Elijah suddenly woke up. I'm fine. Your grandpa is just a bit tired, he said. Ophelia took a blanket and covered Elijah as she said, Okay, Grandpa, you rest first. After Ophelia left him, Elijah took out an old photo from his pocket. The picture was of an infant. Elijah gently touched the photo and then pressed it to his chest. I'm sorry, he murmured. Ophelia walked into the living room and saw Damon sitting on the sofa with his lights crossed. Is Grandpa asleep? he asked. Yeah, Ophelia nodded. He thinks something's wrong with him. Damon's smart. Grandpa's just waiting for death, he said. Ophelia's eyes were filled with horror. How could he curse his grandfather like that? Damon, you... She started. Ophelia, with your softness, you definitely wouldn't be able to survive in the Hoffman family, Damon said with a mocking tone. So you should thank me for allowing you an early release. Ophelia frowned. Damon was being strange today. During dinner, Ophelia felt like everyone in the Hoffman family was acting weird. After dinner, Helen told Ophelia to go home. Mom, Ophelia's going to see for your birthday tomorrow, Madeline implied. I don't think I particularly care for my birthday this year, Helen said coldly to Ophelia. You can go now. Of course, Ophelia understood. Okay. Then I'll come back and see you next time, she said. Madeline looked at Ophelia. Although she didn't like Ophelia, Madeline wasn't as mean to her as her mother-in-law. She adopted an indifferent attitude. Ophelia didn't say much. She just grabbed her bag and prepared to leave the manor. As she passed by Robert's study, Ophelia overheard a conversation between Andrew and his father. Dad, what happened to Grandpa's will? Andrew asked loudly. Robert told Andrew to lower his voice so that no one would overhear. Ophelia frowned as she listened. Grandfather must be losing his sensibility. Otherwise, why would he leave the inheritance to an outsider? Andrew said angrily. I am the eldest grandson of the Hoffman family. Why wouldn't it be mine? Andrew, lower your voice, Robert told Andrew. Ophelia heard footsteps and quickly walked away. If they found out they were being overheard, the consequences would certainly be severe. 
Ophelia walked to the front door and changed her shoes. Damon's voice came from behind her. You're going home? He asked. Yes. Damon reached Ophelia's side. Where do you live now? I have a place. Ophelia replied. Damon frowned. Can I drop you off? Ophelia shook her head. No need. This new version of Ophelia had a bit of a temple. Damon found that he didn't dislike it. Ophelia, you've learned how to stand up for yourself. Ophelia ignored Damon and walked out the door. Damon followed behind and put his arm around Ophelia's shoulders. She frowned. She didn't like the intimate contact between them. What are you doing? She asked angrily. My mother is watching us from upstairs, Damon whispered into Ophelia's ear. Out of the corner of her eye, Ophelia saw a figure standing in front of a window on the second floor. As for who it was, it was unclear. Damon felt Ophelia resisting him all the way to his car. Get in, he said. Ophelia had no other choice. They drove away from the men. Ophelia looked out the window quietly and ignored Damon. He peeked at Ophelia now and then as he drove. Stop here, out front, she said. At Ophelia's command, Damon stopped the car. Would Damon find out about Ophelia's new place? What would happen if he gets to know about Xavier and Ophelia's marriage? Ophelia was thrown forward as he pulled the emergency brake. Damon's eyes were furious. He looked like he was going to explode. Before Ophelia to recover from her shock, she heard Damon's shrill voice. Ophelia, are you insane? Ophelia frowned. Damon, what did I do wrong? She asked. What did you do wrong? Damon sneered. Don't think that you can just do whatever you want just because we're divorced. Ophelia clenched her fists tightly and thought about it. She didn't think she'd done anything to embarrass Damon. What happened? Of course, Damon wouldn't tell her. Ophelia glanced at him. Have a safe drive back. She opened the car door and left. Damon was flooded with rage, but he couldn't do anything about it, so he drove away. Ophelia stood by the roadside, looking at the car that was already long gone. She really didn't understand that thing. Once she finally got home, Ophelia kicked off her high heels and fell to the ground like a deflated balloon. Every time she went to visit the Hoffman family, she was a nervous wreck. Everyone treated her with varying levels of indifference. The Hoffman family was surprisingly quiet today. It felt as though everyone was keeping something from her. What surprised her even more was that Helen had canceled her birthday party. It was the first time in years that something had stopped her celebration. And the nonsense Robert said in the study, they seemed to be hiding something. Ophelia put her head in her hands. As much as she thought about it, she really couldn't understand it. Ophelia took out her cell phone after she relaxed for a while. Xavier hadn't called all day. She wondered how he was. Her face turned pale as she realized where her mind had wandered to. Was it the same for him? She made a call. Ophelia cursed her heart's instinct for overcoming her rationality. The phone rang and rang, but no one answered. He must have been busy. Ophelia's eyes dimmed for a moment. Just as she was about to hang up, somebody picked up the phone. A sweet female voice greeted her. Ophelia's eyes, which had lit up when she thought he'd answered, were cold. A woman answered Xavier's phone. Did he have other women abroad? Ophelia gripped her cell phone tightly as all sorts of thoughts flowed through her head. She didn't know why, but her stomach turned. She wanted to believe Xavier. Still, she didn't. Hello? Ophelia blinked nervously. She hadn't responded. She didn't know how to. Ophelia put down her phone and disappointment formed on her face. She put her head in her hands and felt like she was about to cry. The fragility took hold again within her. In just a few short days, she'd already become completely reliant on Xavier. In the end, she couldn't hold back her tears as they fell relentlessly. Ella Carter put down Xavier's cell phone and wondered who the caller could have been. She looked at the contact on Xavier's phone. She said a hill, so she couldn't tell if they were male or female. When Xavier finished his shower, he saw her standing in front of his desk. His blue-gray eyes went cold. Ella, what are you doing? Xavier's tone was firm. Sir, I... Xavier saw his phone on his desk behind her when Ella moved. Xavier took a few steps forward and reached for his phone. He opened it, and sure enough, 
You picked up my call? Xavier's tone grew angry. Yes. She hesitated for a moment before she nodded. I'm sorry. Xavier glanced at the door. From now on, you're not to enter my room. Get out! Ella's beautiful eyes were full of guilt. She bit her lip and turned to leave. Her family was bankrupt. She couldn't afford to offend him now, or else she'd be finished. Taking advantage of the fact that her family and the Woods family were somewhat friendly, she took a bold course of action and went directly to Xavier's grandfather's place to wait. She knew that Xavier would come back around this time of year, because a few days later was the anniversary of his mother's death. Therefore, it was also a chance for her to show off. Of course, if she could marry Xavier, that would be the best outcome. If that didn't work out, she could find a high-paying job at Sequoia. After all, she was also Xavier's assistant. When Xavier saw Ella leave, he made sure his door was locked. If his grandfather hadn't told Ella to stay, he wouldn't have had to tolerate her at all. This woman was scheming, and she didn't like her. She'd picked up Ophelia's phone call, but he had no idea what they talked about. He wasn't sure if she would think too much about it. He thought about Ophelia, and a smile formed on his face. The shadow stepped into the room from the balcony. I didn't know you were capable of such an expression. A cold and hollow voice rang out. Xavier put away his smile and donned a more serious expression. Why didn't you stop Ella just now? He asked. Boss, that woman is the self-proclaimed future Miss Xavier Woods. And your grandfather treats her pretty well, the man said. Xavier squinted. He didn't believe the excuse. Aiden? You remember my bottom line. Xavier was angry. Aiden Burns straightened his back and grew serious. I'm sorry, he pleaded. Pay attention next time, Xavier demanded. Yes, sir. Aiden hadn't expected Xavier to let him off that easily. After Xavier sat down, he said, Watch Mrs. Carter closely. Yes, sir. Xavier waved Aiden out and looked at his phone. He picked up his cell to call Ophelia. She didn't pick up. Xavier called the person protecting Ophelia back home. Xavier frowned as they gave her report. She'd been belittled again by the Hoffman family. Xavier was surprised to hear that Helen would cancel the birthday party. Robert and Helen didn't get along. Although the two of them pretended to be in love, they had fallen out a long time ago. But Helen was still the matriarch of the Hoffman family, so she always showed off on her birthday. It was extremely unusual that she would choose to cancel the birthday party this year. Ophelia had really misunderstood Xavier. Would she find out the truth once Xavier returned, or dwell in her own misunderstanding? Xavier didn't think too much about it. He just asked Nathan Burns to make sure he protects Ophelia. Xavier called her again. It's time, she answered. However, she could hear the congestion in her voice. Have you been crying? Xavier's heart softened for some reason. No. Ophelia answered softly. Xavier shook his head helplessly. She was trying to be brave. Did you call me just now? Yeah. She answered flatly. Xavier knew that Ophelia was in a bad mood, but he couldn't be by her side. He felt a little guilty. Can I tell you what happened with that phone call? Xavier asked. If it were anyone else, he wouldn't bother to explain. But he was willing to explain anything to Ophelia. He didn't want to be misunderstood. She was his wife. Ophelia was silent, so Xavier continued. Ophelia, I haven't done anything behind your back. That woman who answered is a friend of a distant relative of mine. I have a completely ordinary, if not irritating, relationship with her. Ophelia still didn't answer. He wanted to make it clear, so he said, She and I, Xavier, I believe you. Ophelia cut him off. Her words gave Xavier a lot of comfort. As long as she believed him, nothing else mattered. Ophelia, as long as you're willing to stay by my side, I promise you, I won't betray you. <sighs> he wanted to be responsible for this woman, stand by her. Ophelia's mood seemed to have improved after hearing me. I'll do the same, she said. Go to bed early. You've had a long day today, Xavier said softly. <laughs> Ophelia's voice was full of reluctance. Finally, she mumbled. When will you be back? Xavier looked at the calendar on the table. One week. After the call ended, Xavier touched his chin. It seemed like she wanted to end the call as soon as possible. 
As Xavier's bodyguard, Aiden could say that his jaw was on the ground for the first time. In just ten short days, their hard-headed boss had actually gotten married. This was explosive news. And yet, he wasn't the first one to know about it. Aiden moved further into his hidden vantage point. If you want to know more, then come out. Xavier realized that Aiden was eavesdropping. Boss, I didn't mean to. Aiden walked out. His hearing was excellent. He'd just come back from a mission to find out that the boss got married. Shocking news. Xavier didn't make a sound, so Aiden pushed further. Boss, you're really married? Yeah, Xavier breathed. Well, who is she? Xavier raised his eyebrows. I'll introduce you next time when you come back with me. Knowing that it wasn't his place, Aiden continued the conversation with caution. I'm worried that Norris will find out about it. How will the old man react? When the time comes, I'll tell him myself, Xavier answered. Okay, boss. Xavier put his phone away and asked, Aiden, are you ready for another assignment? Always. Everything's up to you, boss, Aiden had answered. Xavier narrowed his eyes. It seemed the time had come. The next day, when Xavier arrived to pay his respects to his grandfather, he saw Ella working in the room, looking like a family member. Ella flashed a smile when she saw him walk in. Ah, you're awake. Yes, Xavier answered coldly. Sensing that Xavier had something to talk to him about, Norris asked Ella to leave. Soon, they were alone in the room. Speak, his grandfather demanded. Xavier replied. Grandfather, we're preparing to officially enter New York City. Norris Woods put down the teacup in his hand. Very good, he exclaimed. He'd been waiting for this day for nearly 20 years. Grandfather, I want to go back and prepare after paying my respects to Mother tomorrow, Xavier explained. Of course. He had no objections. Soon he'd return to New York City. He was thrilled. His blood was boiling, and his sharp eyes were fixed on a photo on the wall. Son, wait a moment. Norris grabbed his hand tightly. He could finally avenge his precious daughter. Grandfather... I want to see Grandma this afternoon, he said. Right, go on. Norris nodded. Just as Xavier was about to leave, his grandfather spoke up. Xavier, you're not young anymore. You should get married when this is all over. Xavier waited for the sentence he knew his grandfather would say next, so he didn't dare interrupt. I think Ella is a pretty good girl. Norris had spoken his mind. Xavier closed his blue eyes full of dissatisfaction. Grandfather, I'll decide on my own, he said. You don't like Ella? His grandfather asked. No, I don't, Xavier said honestly. She doesn't suit me. There are barely any suitable people in this world, his grandfather answered. Xavier knew the matter with his mother had dealt a huge blow to the public, so he didn't blame his grandfather. If he didn't have him... Xavier would have died long ago. He would repay this kindness, but not by sacrificing his own happiness. Norris also knew full well that Xavier didn't like people like Ella. All right, we'll talk about it later, Xavier said before he left. Ella stood up as soon as he walked into the living room. Sir, have you finished talking with Grandfather? Xavier glanced at her and said, It's time for you to go home. I want to pay my respects to my aunt tomorrow before I leave, she said. No need, Xavier refused without thinking. You're not family. Ella didn't expect him to speak to her like that. Sir, I'm sorry. After Xavier left, Ella clenched her fist. The more he despised her, the more she wanted to get closer to him. She would prove to them all that she was the most qualified woman to stand by Xavier's side. She knew she couldn't let Xavier hate her, so she packed obediently. Aiden and Xavier watched from nearby as Ella packed her luggage and left. Boss, you need to be careful with that woman, his bodyguard said. I know. I know. What trouble was Ella planning to cause in Xavier's life? And would Xavier let her get away with her plans? Xavier turned around and left Aiden with his shadow. Aiden shrugged. Their boss was still as calm as ever, but Aiden was still curious about what this new wife looked like. She was able to enthrall the boss in such a short period of time. It was impressive, 
He'd called to ask Nathan, but he wouldn't say a word. That afternoon, Xavier went to visit his grandmother. Grandmother? He greeted politely. Mary turned around to the sound of the familiar voice. She had a soft, kind face, fair skin, curly blonde hair, and blue eyes similar to Xavier's. Her eyes were dull and unfocused, and it wasn't until Xavier was in front of her that she slowly reached out her hand and said, Is it Xavier? Xavier stretched his hand out to hold Mary's. Yes, Grandma, I'm back. Mary nodded and touched Xavier's face. You've lost weight. Mary was in a good mood thanks to Xavier's arrival. She held his hand and chatted with him for a long time. Xavier stood to the side and watched the doctor examine his grandmother. How is she? Xavier asked. She's fine. She just can't see, the doctor reminded him. Xavier frowned. His grandmother had been blind for ten years. When her mother died, she cried for a month, eventually losing her sight entirely. He felt as though for the past twenty years, the Woods family had been in a constant state of grief. Xavier spoke to the doctor for a moment, and then prepared to leave. Xavier? He heard his grandmother's feeble voice. Xavier looked back at his grandmother with wide eyes. He sat by her side. What's wrong? Xavier, don't be blinded by hatred. I don't want any harm done to our family. And don't follow your grandfather blindly, Mary said meaningfully. Xavier held his grandma's hand. Grandmother, I know what to do. Good. Granny doesn't want you to be like that, Mary spoke softly. And don't be like your mother. Yeah. You know, she can see it. Mary laughed. Xavier, Grandma wants you to find someone you really love and build a family. That's your granny's dying wish. Xavier's face became gentle in a way that it rarely was. Grandma, I have a secret to tell you, he whispered. What? She said. Tell me. I'm married. The moment she heard Xavier's words, Mary lit up. Hey, she asked. Yeah, but don't tell Grandfather about it, please, Xavier requested. All right. Mary nodded her head. What's she like? Xavier told her about Ophelia. Grandma, you have to keep this a secret, he cautioned. Mary was thrilled. Her favorite grandson was finally married. It was a good thing that he'd managed to clear his mind. For a time, she was worried that Xavier would never marry because of what happened to his mother. Fortunately, he didn't listen to his grandfather. When she was reminded of Norris, Mary suddenly realized something. Xavier, you're not married to Ella, right? Grandma, it's not her, Xavier assured her. After getting her answer, Mary nodded in satisfaction. Good. My wife's name is Ophelia. I'll bring her to see you next time, he said. Mary answered emotionally. Yes, please. After spending the whole afternoon at the nursing home, Xavier returned home. How is your grandmother? Norris asked once they entered the door. Xavier took a drink of water. He knew that his grandfather was truly worried, so he brought Norris up to speed about the situation. Is she coming back tomorrow? He asked. Yes, Xavier nodded. Grandma said she'd come back. I'll have Aiden pick her up in the morning. Norris couldn't help but get excited. After so many years, she was finally willing to return. Xavier saw his grandfather's expression so he didn't drop the news of his marriage yet. That night, after Xavier was done with his work, he called Ophelia. It seemed like Ophelia was waiting for his call. He greeted her with a question as soon as she picked up the phone. You're not asleep yet? No, there's uh, one more report I have to tidy up. He explained. Don't stay up too late. I know. Are you busy over there? Yeah, been very busy. You have to pay attention to your body, his wife warned. Xavier smirked. I've always been in good health. You can rest assured, my body is fine. Xavier seemed to be able to imagine Ophelia's expression. She hung up the phone after finding an excuse to rush the report. Xavier's words had actually sent her into a spiral. She started to take a few deep breaths and go back to her computer, looking at the report and typing on the keyboard. She had to finish it as soon as possible. There was still a hard fight to be had with the board tomorrow. As she focused, Ophelia didn't notice the red sports car parked in front of the villa. Damon looked at the address on his phone and confirmed it again before getting out of the car. The villas here weren't cheap. Even he himself couldn't buy one. 
how could Ophelia afford to live here? Had she taken out all of her money? Retirement? Investments? No, that wasn't her style. She wasn't someone who wasted such things. Could it be that this was a friend's home and they'd lent it to her temporarily? No, that's not right. Ophelia didn't have many friends. Jane was her only real one. He was well aware of Jane's financial background. If that was the case, there was only one explanation. Ophelia had really found a place to stay, or someone to stay with. This was where that man must live. He had to be a big shot, or he wouldn't be able to live here. Damon frowned. It seemed he'd have to investigate the matter more thoroughly. He didn't want to wear this jealous hat. Although he and Ophelia were divorced, in the eyes of others, they were still husband and wife. His reputation as the second-born son of the Hoffman family couldn't be trashed by Ophelia like this. Damon went back to his car, clenching his fists. In less than a minute, Damon disappeared down the road. He drove so fast that all that was left was a trail of dust. Damon had been lurking around Ophelia for a while. What would happen if Xavier found out? Xavier received a message as he sat in a dark corner of his room. Even Aiden didn't dare make a sound. He could tell that Xavier was silently fuming. Time ticked by, and Aiden stood silently in front of Xavier. The call seemed to have something to do with his wife. What exactly had happened in New York City that made Xavier so deeply upset? In the dim light, the only thing he could see clearly was Xavier's blue-gray eyes. He was like a leopard stalking through the dark of night. Aiden couldn't help but shiver. He'd seen a lot of things, but the only thing that scared him was Xavier when he was truly angry. Aiden, Xavier barked. Aiden came to his senses when he heard Xavier's voice. Yes! Go and pack up. We'll head back to New York City tomorrow after Mom's memorial, he said. Boss, are you sure we have to leave so soon? Aiden knew that Xavier still had other things to do, so it was strange that he wanted to rush back to New York City like this. Xavier closed his eyes. Aiden had a point. He was only worried that Ophelia wouldn't be able to deal with things alone. Damon had apparently started an investigation of his own. Boss, I hope you're thinking this through. After all, we've waited 20 years, and the closer we get, the calmer we have to be. Aiden frowned as he reminded him. It would be difficult for them to get a second chance. In the quiet room, Aiden heard the sound of Xavier's knuckles flexing. Aiden hesitated for a moment, but decided to take the risk and speak. Boss, you're in a hurry to return to New York City. Is there something going on? Yeah. Xavier opened his eyes again, but there was no anxiety in them. Boss, are you sure she can't handle this? After all, she's the one you want. Aiden didn't want Xavier to lose everything because of a woman. If they had no other options, they could figure something out. But their plan could not be stopped just because of this. It wasn't just Norris's hatred fueling this. It was Xavier's. It was the entire Woods family's last hope. Perhaps it was because of Aiden's words, but Xavier rolled his eyes. Should he just trust Ophelia for now? The next morning, Xavier began his journey for the day, and Ophelia began her work. She closed her eyes as she sat at her desk. She was mentally preparing for the meeting with the board of directors. Amy knocked on her door. Director Hill, it's almost time, she said. Ophelia opened her eyes. Thanks. Amy looked worriedly at Ophelia. Amy knew her boss was going to be standing against the board alone, so her chances of victory were slim. Ophelia knew that Amy was worried about her, so she smiled. Amy, don't worry. If this doesn't work out, I'll make sure that you're not affected. Amy frowned. She'd been working with Ophelia ever since she'd entered the company. She was the best witness to how Ophelia had fought to this day. It was a pity that her hard work for Hillcrest had always been taken for granted. It wouldn't be easy for Ophelia to gain support from the board members. Although they'd supported her in the past, in the face of money, they were spineless. Amy felt sorry for Ophelia. She was too kind, too unsure of herself. Fighting so many people at once would be no small feat. Amy, let's go, Ophelia said tersely. Amy nodded. Director Hill, I'm prepared to advance and retreat together with you, she said. Thank you for supporting me. Ophelia said with a smile. I'm already prepared for the work. As they walked into the meeting room, they saw that quite a few board members had already arrived. 
When Connor Murphy saw Ophelia coming in, he headed straight for her. Are you really planning to fight your father to the death? Uncle Murphy, it's him who wants to fight me right now, Ophelia said. You should listen to him. Connor was worried about Ophelia. Richard had obviously given Ophelia a serious battle to fight. Everyone knew the eastern part of the city was on the table for many large enterprises. The one who had the best chance of coming out on top was the Hoffman family. In the end, Richard told Ophelia to come up with a plan to compete for that plot. Everyone who worked for the Hillcrest Realty Company knew it was an impossible mission. Richard still wanted Ophelia to use the shortest amount of time and the least amount of money to complete this plan. Everyone knew it was a ploy, but the silly girl stubbornly accepted it. And today, Richard convened for this board meeting. If there was a single flaw, it would be a bloodbath. Richard and Emily entered the meeting room. Connor was upset. The world had changed. Richard had reneged on his promise to Margaret and walked in so confidently with the daughter of a mistress. Richard coughed a few times and everyone sat down. Ophelia glanced at Richard nonchalantly and sat down in her seat as well. Everyone, the purpose of the meeting today is to discuss the matter of land, Richard said. Director Hill accepted the challenge of creating a development plan, and today she'll explain to us the details and implementation of that plan. After Richard finished speaking, everyone's gaze fell on Ophelia. The Eastern Development Plan was a hot potato. Richard spoke easily and threw it to Ophelia. Thus far, even the Hoffman family hadn't dared to carelessly compete for this piece of land. Ophelia stood up, bowed to everyone, and then stepped up to a podium to begin her speech. Her plan wasn't bad. It was pretty impressive for the short turnaround time that her father had demanded. Richard couldn't deny Ophelia's ability. She'd grown up very fast these few years. Under these circumstances, she was outstanding. What about the budget? Richard asked. Ophelia shook her head. My plan will work, she said. But in order to complete this kind of plan and layout, even if the company were to obtain a loan from the bank, it wouldn't be possible. To say it bluntly, this is only a hypothetical plan. Allow me to calculate for a bit. Even if we use the entire business as collateral, it might not be possible. Ophelia had proven herself yet again. Richard had no choice but to agree with her. Ophelia's words silenced everyone. She was right. Even the Hoffman family wasn't going to act rashly for such a big project. Furthermore, Hillcrest was in the midst of other development projects. So, Director Hill, based on what you said, your mission was a failure. Emily's voice had a hint of pride in it. Ophelia calmly glanced at Emily as she inwardly thought about her foolishness. She had no authority to speak in this meeting. Sure enough, there are already shareholders asking to see my plans. Do you know the rules? You're not a director or a department head. What qualifications do you have to speak here? Ophelia replied. Emily lowered her head, not daring to speak. Chairman, in the future, don't bring any uninvolved people into the meeting, Connor Murphy instructed. Connor, Emily wants to work for the company. We need to recruit talented people, Richard said. Then may I ask what kind of talent Miss Emily Hill has? Connor asked. If she really is talented, then why doesn't she just tell me? What was the primary element that needs improvement in Director Hill's plan just now? Emily's face turned red. She didn't understand those things at all. She'd only come today to see Ophelia make a fool of herself. As they listened to Connor's suggestion, several board members agreed with his line of questioning. Emily looked nervously at Richard. Daddy. Richard didn't look too pleased either. Everyone, today we are mainly discussing Director Hill's proposal, he said. Everyone in the room knew he was just changing the topic. Ophelia's heart froze as she clenched her hands tightly. So, Director Hill... According to what you're saying, Hillcrest doesn't have the ability to compete, Richard asked. Ophelia nodded. Correct, unless the chairman is willing to sell the company. Richard got angry. What nonsense are you spouting? Watch your tongue in front of the board. Or are you willing to take out your shares in Hillcrest in exchange for this competitive opportunity? I know that the Hoffman family recently wanted to join hands with the QA Corporation to bid, Ophelia proposed. Ophelia's words made Richard embarrassed. He glared at her and chastised. Is that your attitude at work? Chairman, that's all I can do for you. 
that also tells me that your ability is limited. You promised me that if you couldn't complete this plan, you would accept any consequences. Her father said. Yes, I said so. Richard stood up. Since Director Hill did not complete this task, we'll be removing you from your position as Vice President. The moment Richard finished speaking, the entire room went silent. Richard was trying to oust his own daughter as quickly as possible. As Ophelia heard this announcement, even though she was mentally prepared for it, she still felt like the rug was being ripped out from under her. She couldn't help keep her mother's legacy at the company. Chairman, isn't this decision a bit too hasty? Because of an impossible problem, you want to fire Director Hill? Connor was unconvinced. Richard glanced at Connor. This is what Ophelia agreed to. I also followed this agreement. Chairman, if I may ask, if it was you, what kind of plan would you come up with? Connor asked. Connor? Careful, her father warned. Connor scoffed. I think I've seen enough today. This company won't be in the hands of the hill for long. With that, Connor angrily walked out of the meeting room, followed by several other directors, shareholders, and board members. Peter Thompson, who was sitting next to Richard, opened his mouth. Rick, don't bring your family matters to the company. Peter stood up, leaning on his cane. He glanced at Ophelia and said, Director Hill, it's good for you youngsters to speak up. Find a company that'll listen to you if need be. With that, he left. Soon, only three people remained in the meeting room, the father and daughters of the Hill family. Ophelia gathered her meeting materials. Chairman, if there's nothing else, I'll be leaving now. Emily finally found the opportunity to speak. Ophelia, remember to pack all your things, she said. Yeah, sure, Ophelia answered in surprise. Say one thing. Don't be thrilled. You've got no idea what'll happen tomorrow. Ophelia walked out of the meeting room and finally exhaled. As soon as she returned to her office, Amy rushed over. Director Hill, are you all right? She asked. Oh, fine, Ophelia muttered. Amy supported Ophelia. She'd already heard the news. Ophelia must have been devastated, so she didn't dare to say anything. Director Hill, your husband is here, Amy said. Upon hearing that, the corner of Ophelia's mouth curved up in a self-deprecating smile. Came to see me in my worst moments, she muttered. Amy didn't answer. Instead, she simply helped Ophelia to her feet and sat down with her. Amy, could I trouble you to pour me a cup of water? Ophelia asked. Of course. Amy left briefly and returned with a drink. Ophelia took the water from Amy, raised her head, and drank it down in one go. After putting down the cup, Ophelia stood. Amy watched Ophelia push open the door and enter her office. She hoped that Ophelia and Damon could have a good talk. After all, the two of them were husband and wife. Why are you here? Ophelia spoke first. Damon looked up from his phone and saw that Ophelia was in relatively good spirits. Seems you're not as weak as I thought. Pretty good, Damon said with a smile. Ophelia walked over to her seat. Sorry to disappoint you. It was a foregone conclusion, no? Damon said bluntly. Yeah. Ophelia nodded. Well, you've seen me at my lowest. If you're satisfied, you can leave. Damon put away his phone and stepped in front of Ophelia with one hand in his pocket. I'll wait for you to pack your things. We can leave together. Ophelia frowned. She hadn't expected Damon to say something like that. Moreover, he didn't seem to be acting as arrogantly as usual. He seemed to have a little bit of humanity in him today. Damon had newly developed a soft spot for Ophelia. What was going through his mind? After Ophelia sat down, she started packing her things. Damon walked to the front of her desk with his long legs and leaned against it. Ophelia, why did you accept his challenge? Damon had come here last minute when he heard about the meeting. With Ophelia's commitment to the company, it was impossible for her not to have known that this was a trap. Ophelia stopped what she was doing. Damon, are you worried about me? Ophelia, there's no one else here. You don't need to show off. Damon frowned and took advantage of the opportunity to sympathize. Ophelia kept her hands busy. Maybe I'm tired of this, she said. Damon couldn't help but smile as he looked at Ophelia. What? You don't want to be a workaholic anymore? He asked. I guess not, Ophelia nodded. And there's nothing to stick around for anymore anyways. Although Ophelia's expression was relaxed, 
she was devastated. After all, she'd broken her promise to her mother. Damon didn't say anything else. He had a lot of questions he wanted to ask her, but now wasn't the time. Damon watched Ophelia carry her things out of her office. He wanted to reach out and help her, but he knew better than that. Emily was thrilled to see Ophelia's bedraggled appearance. When she discovered Ophelia had already finished packing, she blocked the doorway. Ophelia, Daddy told me to come and see if you'd collected all of the company's classified files. Ophelia glanced at Emily. Come on in and check. Of course. Emily walked in, her heels announcing each step. Just as she was about to start rummaging through the box Ophelia had prepared, she spotted someone in the room from the corner of her eye. When she saw who it was, Emily's heart tightened. Had he seen her attitude towards Ophelia just now? Damon, I... you... Emily stepped forward to explain. Damon shot her an ice-cold glare that made Emily retract her stuttering words. Her eyes filled with tears and grievance. Damon hadn't sought her out in a while. Ophelia wasn't blind to their actions and expressions. Although her own skills with matters of the heart weren't keen, the situation before her eyes was obvious. She wasn't stupid. She hadn't failed to see the connection between them. Ophelia picked up her box once again. I'll leave you two to talk. Damon frowned. Ophelia was being generous. She'd actually noticed and responded like that? Ophelia ignored Damon's gaze and said, I'll be leaving first. Ophelia, Grandpa told me to take you back. Damon had found an excuse. Ophelia stopped and said, Then I'll go downstairs and wait for you. You guys take your time. Damon watched Ophelia leave, and he didn't feel good about it at all. What kind of attitude was that? And why? Damon, she's gone, Emily said quietly. Damon walked toward Emily and said coldly, What are you trying to do? Damon, do you really not understand? She committed to you. Since you and Ophelia have divorced, why didn't you announce it to the public yet? Emily cried. I really don't know what to do with you. Damon was fed up with Emily. Emily, these are trivial things, he said. Why does everything have to be so serious to you? What did you say? Emily's face paled. I'm supposed to accept the bare minimum? Why not? Isn't that the case with men and women? You don't expect me to give you my name, do you? If every woman needed me to take responsibility like you do, do you think it would be any fun? Emily's face turned even paler. It turned out she was just one of many women in Damon's life. So he didn't divorce Ophelia for her sake. Still unwilling to give up, Emily asked, Then why did you divorce Ophelia? I can divorce her, and of course, I can remarry. Damon spoke easily. So you didn't do it because you loved me. She spoke of her worst fear. Emily, where did your confidence come from in thinking that I love you? All we have is a physical relationship. Emily tightened her fist. Damon, <laughs> Emily, how old are you? You can't understand all this by now. Your sister is smarter than you at this point. She knows how to play dumb. Damon turned and left. Emily turned around and shouted at Damon's back. <laughs> For it. Damon stopped. In that case, I don't need to hear it a second time. Damon headed to the parking lot. He didn't see Ophelia. He took out his cell phone and called her, but she turned her phone off. Damon drove away angrily. Ten minutes ago, Ophelia had been driven south. She had initially refused to get in the car, but when she received a call from Xavier reassuring her, she stepped in. Ophelia fell asleep in the car. She'd stayed up late last night. They headed south towards the villa. Madam, we're here, the driver said. Ophelia opened her eyes. Thank you, she said. As Ophelia was about to get out of the car, the driver handed his phone over to her. Madam, it's Mr. Woods. Ophelia took the cell phone and nodded to him. She picked it up and said, Hello? Huh? Her husband's voice sounded. Yep, Ophelia nodded. Why didn't you call me on my phone? Your phone is off, he said. Ophelia took out her phone, and sure enough, it was off. Oh, battery said. Rest well at home. Don't worry about anything, Xavier explained. I'll be back soon. All right. Ophelia's heart warmed up. I'll deal with everything when I get home, he reassured her. Okay. Xavier's words allowed Ophelia to calm down. After the call ended, Ophelia returned the phone to Nathan. Thank you. 
No need to thank me, Nathan said. He looked a little embarrassed. Ophelia went inside, showered, and went to bed. She had no idea what was going on out in the world. Someone had leaked the fact that Ophelia was fired by Richard, and many of the industry's partners canceled their contracts with Hillcrest Realty. Many companies only chose to cooperate with Hillcrest because of Ophelia's abilities. Since Ophelia wasn't with the company anymore, there was no need to continue doing business with them. Richard hadn't thought about the consequences of dismissing Ophelia at all. While he was at the office panicking and trying to control the chaos, he received news of Emily. She'd attempted to end her own life just that day. Richard rushed to the hospital, and Ruth met him in the waiting room. She assured him that Emily would be all right. Richard let out a sigh of relief. He looked at Ruth and asked, What the hell happened? Ruth cried. Because of Damon. Did Richard just pay a hefty price for firing Ophelia from his business? Or had Ophelia's termination from the company cost Richard dearly? Richard frowned. He sat down. His eyes were full of helplessness. Ruth sat beside Richard, tears streaming down her face. Richard, we need to think of something. We only have one daughter. Richard raised his head and looked at Ruth. Who should we blame for what's happening right now? You're part of the problem here, too, he said. Ruth was at a loss for words after that accusation, so much so that her tears fell. Ruth watched Richard close his eyes and lean his head against the wall. Richard, are you blaming me? she asked in disbelief. Richard opened his eyes and looked at Ruth. Dear, you're really still trying to hide it from me? Ruth's eyes flickered. Her heart skipped a beat. She couldn't have known anything, right? Her voice became unnatural. I don't know what you're talking about. Then tell me, what does Emily's suicide attempt have to do with Damon? He asked flatly. Just... Ruth only said two words before she stopped. Richard saw her pale face. Did you keep asking Emily to pester Damon? Let Damon and Ophelia divorce so she can take her older sister's job and her status as a member of the Hoffman family? He accused. Ruth's mouth trembled. She was unable to utter a single word. So he already knew. Ruthie, you guys did the wrong thing, Richard said. Ruth lowered her head and doubled down. So Ophelia can marry Damon, but my daughter can't. Emily is my daughter. She's so much worse than Ophelia. Only now did Richard realize that Ruth actually felt this way about Ophelia. Her care and concern for Ophelia in front of him had been faked for years. Ruth, you need to stop, Richard frowned and said. The Hoffman family is not suitable for Emily. Ruth's face was unconvinced. She could no longer hide it, and she asked, So it's only suitable for Ophelia. Richard, aren't you being too biased? You're wrong. The Hoffman family is even more complicated than you could ever imagine. If it wasn't because there was a problem funding Hillcrest, do you think I would have married my daughter out? The Hoffman family isn't nearly as impressive as it looks on the surface. You have no clue how much blood has been shed in that family. Haven't you heard the rumors? Richard's words stunned Ruth. She looked at Richard doubtfully and said, Is that true? Why would I lie to you? Richard answered. Now you're pushing Emily into a fire pit. Do you see what I mean? Rich Ruth was in shock. Richard sighed. I only married Ophelia to Damon for the Hoffman family's money. It was only a matter of time before they would get a divorce. But this was not the right time for them. I've already ousted Ophelia, and so many of our partners have canceled their contracts with us already. If the news of their divorce spreads, then Hillcrest might really be finished. You have to understand the power behind all of this. Ruth didn't expect the situation to be this serious. How can this be? she asked. The only reason they're still cooperating with us is also because of the Hoffman family. Richard had a helpless look on his face as he sighed deeply. Ruth truly had made a mistake. It seemed she would have to reconsider the situation from a long-term perspective. Otherwise, they may lose everything. 
Let's end the matter between Emily and Damon now. Persuade her, Richard said. Ruth lowered her head. She also wanted to persuade her. But Emily loves Damon. What should I do? Richard put his head in his hands. We need some help. Ruth's face contorted a little. She bit her lip. In the end, she'd have to beg Emily. Her whole body felt uncomfortable. Why did Ophelia get everything that her daughter wanted first? No. That little scum didn't leave their family alone soon. Then she and her daughter wouldn't live the lives they deserved. One of the doctors entered the waiting room. Emily Hill's family members, they said. Ruth stood up. I'm her mother. Miss Emily Hill's condition has stabilized. But I have to ask, did she tell either of you she was pregnant? The doctor explained. Ruth was shocked. Pregnant? We do not recommend that she keep the child. We didn't know at first, so we used all the medications necessary to keep her alive. The chances of the child being negatively impacted are high, the doctor continued. Obviously, we'll allow you to discuss this and make a decision as soon as possible. Ruth's hope was shattered once again. How could this be? Richard shook his head. How humiliating. How could things have turned out this way? He pictured Damon and Emily in the parking lot that day. He'd never expected something like this to happen. What a headache. Richard, what should we do? Ruth was flustered. Richard felt equally unwell. Both of his daughters had now been destroyed by Damon Hoffman. Emily became even more agitated when they told her about what the doctor had said. I don't want to get rid of the child. Ruth pleaded as she cried. Emily, listen to me. Child so will not be able to have a good life. Ignoring the fact that her wrist was injured, Emily pulled on Ruth's hand with all of her might. She strained too hard, causing the wound to open. Blood dyed the gauze red again. Ruth's heart ached even more when she saw Emily bleeding. Emily, don't get so worked up, she cried. Mom, I want to see Damon. This is his child. Emily grabbed Ruth's hand and begged her to contact Damon. Richard couldn't bear to see his daughter cry like that. He went to the waiting room and made a call to Damon. Damon happened to be in a meeting at work, so he couldn't answer Richard's call. Andrew walked into Damon's office to get a document when he saw that Damon's cell phone was vibrating. His face shifted a little when he saw the name on the caller ID. Like Richard needed something urgent from the amount of missed calls Damon had. Could it be because of his impulsive expulsion of Ophelia? Andrew originally wanted to answer the phone silently, as if he was a fly on the wall, but he didn't expect to hear such explosive news. The moment he picked up the phone, Richard said, Damon, you're coming to the hospital right now! Andrew was confused. Had something happened to Ophelia? Even though she was a bit mute with her feelings, Richard shouldn't have been so short-sighted, if for no other reason than how wholeheartedly she supported Hillcrest. Damon, don't even think about shirking responsibility, no matter what happens. You owe me an explanation for the matter between you and Emily, Richard said angrily. Andrew raised his eyebrows when he heard that. Was they actually involved with Emily? I don't care what you're doing right now. Come to Central Hospital. Emily is pregnant, Richard shouted. Andrew opened his eyes wide. Pregnant? Damon had gotten himself into a really tight spot. Would he, together with the Hill family, convince Emily to abort the child? Damon also heard the news as he entered his office. When he saw Andrew holding his phone, he frowned. Andrew, what are you doing with my phone? He asked flatly. He snatched his phone back. When he saw that the call was from Richard, his heart sank. Andrew seemed to have realized it as he revealed a meaningful smile. My God, little brother, you're good, he said. I don't know what you're talking about, Damon answered. Your father-in-law just called and said he wanted you to go to the hospital right away, Andrew said with a smile. Damon understood the meaning behind Andrew's smile. Damon sat down on his phone, obviously not wanting to talk about it. When Andrew saw that Damon didn't make a move, he became even more excited to watch the show. Or do you need me to go with you? Damon glanced at Andrew. I didn't think my big brother would be so thrilled to mock my misery, he said. 
Yes, but since you're going to be a father, I really don't mind going, Andrew said with a smirk. Damon was stunned. His eyes glazed over. What did you just say? Oh, did I forget to relay that message? Your father-in-law said his daughter was pregnant and demanded you go to the hospital. Andrew spoke easily, but it was as if he was watching his favorite TV drama. Is Emily actually pregnant? Damon's eyes were full of rage. He knew Ruth and Emily had planned all of this. They were only waiting for him to jump in. Andrew was giddy as he watched Damon leave in a hurry. He took out his cell phone and called Helen. Mom, I have some news to tell you, he said excitedly. Damon rushed to the hospital and heard Emily's crying before he even reached her room. He anxiously rubbed the back of his neck and frowned. His whole body radiated with anger. Damon pushed open the door forcefully and looked around the hospital room maliciously. Richard stood up when Damon appeared at the door. You're finally here, he said. Ruth let go of her daughter's hand and walked up to Damon. Damon, explain yourself. Damon's eyes were cold. How do you want me to explain this to you? He asked. What do you think we should do if Emily is pregnant with your child? Ruth stared at Damon. Since the situation had developed to this point, she had to get an answer from Damon no matter what. She couldn't let her daughter be ruined so easily. <laughs> Damon snorted and took a step forward. He stepped out in front of Emily. You say you're carrying my child, and I should just believe you? Should I know you haven't been hanging around with other men? It's naive of you to want to tie me down with a child. When Emily heard this, her heart cracked. Damon, I'm no kind of person. I do love you. Love me? Damon said without mercy. You loved me. So you joined forces with your mother that night and plotted against me? Emily's face grew paler, and she trembled all over. So that's what I am in your heart. Damon, you're cruel. Damon's cold gaze swept past Emily. He used to compare her to Ophelia. Now that he thought about it, he was indeed wrong. Although they were sisters, they were not born to the same mother, and it showed. Damon, what are you going to do now? Ruth hadn't expected Damon to be so heartless. Damon glanced at her. I don't even know whether this is my child or not. What do you want me to do? Ruth was enraged. Richard went forward to support her. He looked at Damon with anger. He never thought he could be so despicable. Emily got out of bed and walked slowly to Damon. Damon, this really is your child, she whispered. Emily, I told you before, you cannot have this child, Damon said flatly. Emily retreated a few steps in disbelief. Damon, you're heartless. Emily, I told you, you and I are one and the same. We had our fun. If you can't afford to play, then don't, he replied. Richard helped Ruth sit down. He walked back to Damon and punched him square in the face. Damon picked his hands up, but he didn't fight back. Emily saw the worry on Damon's face and stepped in front of him. Hit him, she cried. Emily, this man is not worth your sanity, her father responded. Emily's face was streaked with tears. When Emily stepped in front of Damon, Richard had no choice to give up. Damon, explain yourself. See what she's done to my family. Damon rubbed his face with his hand. Richard had used all of his strength in that punch. You owe Emily an explanation, Richard said. Since things had already come to this point, she couldn't afford to worry about much else. Before Damon could reply, a cold female voice came from the door. Chairman Hill, you still have a mean swing, the voice said. Everyone turned around to see Helen, who wore a dignified gown, standing at the door. Beside her stood Andrew. Damon glanced at the two of them and lowered his head. His big brother must have notified their mom. Richard didn't dare to act recklessly with those two standing in the doorway. Helen glanced at Damon. Damon wasn't her favorite child. She would still protect her family. What did our Damon do to warrant such violence? She asked. Richard spoke up for his daughter. Emily is pregnant with Damon's child. Is that so? Helen said as she glanced at Emily, who was already in tears. Miss Hill, are you sure that the child in your stomach belongs to our Damon? She asked. Emily was terrified of the look in Helen's eyes. Damon's mother 
scary. Helen stared at Emily. Why aren't you answering? She pressed. Ruth had finally recovered. Mrs. Hoffman, the child in Emily's womb belongs to Damon. I want to hear it from her. Helen's voice was even sharper. Emily's heart trembled, and then she nodded. Helen sneered. Are you mute this time? Where's the momentum from before? This is Damon's child, Emily whispered. Helen nodded. If this is really Damon's child, she said, then the Hoffman family will, of course, take responsibility. But I just heard from the doctor that we shouldn't keep the baby. Emily stumbled back a few steps and fell onto her bed. Ruth stepped forward to support Emily. Emily, are you all right? Ophelia was still unaware of the mess Damon and Emily had created. What would happen if she heard this distressing news? Ruth comforted Emily and then stepped towards Helen to argue. Mrs. Hoffman, do you have to say it like that? She asked. Helen didn't take Ruth seriously at all. Did I say something wrong? You're all hypocrites. She's Ophelia, you wouldn't be acting like this. Ruth shouted. Helen smiled and nodded. You're absolutely right about that. There's one crucial difference. Ophelia is actually married to Damon. She is a member of the Hoffman family, and your daughter is not. Even though she knew it was her brother-in-law, she still climbed into his bed. Isn't that even more shameful? What kind of mother raises a daughter like that? Helen scolded. You... Ruth's face was beet red. Helen smirked. Am I wrong? You know better than any of us how Margaret died that year, she said. When Ruth saw Helen's expression, she panicked. Did she know what happened all those years ago? No, that was impossible. No one knew. It was impossible for her to know. Helen narrowed her eyes. Although she never really liked Ophelia, she disliked Ruth and her daughter even more. This mother-daughter duo were insatiable in their greed. Margaret was the only one who could handle them all those years ago. It was too bad she ended up where she had. Ruth clenched her fists. Mrs. Hoffman, you must give us a reasonable solution for this situation no matter what, she demanded. Helen smiled and said, What kind of solution do you suggest? Damon and Ophelia should divorce. Then he should marry Emily, Ruth said as if it was the obvious choice. Helen didn't react. She paced the room a few times, then walked over to a chair and sat down. She took out her cell phone and placed it on the table. I didn't hear you clearly just now. Say that again, she requested. Ruth threw caution to the wind as she walked up to Helen and said it loudly. Helen nodded as she listened. That's not impossible. However, once they get divorced, then our support for your Hill family will also end. You have to think carefully about such a deal. And I heard that Chairman Hill here so kindly fired Ophelia today. Now there are a lot of partners canceling their contracts. Are you sure you want to do that? She proposed. Richard frowned. Helen was right. Hillcrest faced threats on all sides at the moment, and it couldn't withstand any further damage. Helen was indeed a formidable woman. She knew how to exploit all of their weaknesses. Andrew, who had been watching from a far corner, also opened his mouth. Sherman Hill is a smart guy. He should know what to do. I wouldn't be so sure about that, Helen replied. Ruth reached forward and took Richard's hand. Richard, are you really willing to betray Emily? Richard held her hand tightly and turned his head to the other side. He was conflicted. Why don't you guys tell us what you'd like to do, Helen said. Helen looked at Damon. Let's go home. Grandpa is waiting for us. Damon closed his eyes and accepted his fate. As he followed Helen out of the ward, Andrew said, Brother, have you thought about how to explain this to father and grandfather? I suggest you take Ophelia with you. Helen looked coldly at Damon. You really screwed up this time. Is it so hard for you to choose which women to sleep with? You just had to pick someone like Emily. She and her mother are the same, insatiably greedy. I'm sorry. 
I was wrong, he said. Explain yourself to your father and grandfather, Helen said. Whether you and Ophelia want a divorce or not, you cannot marry Emily. The Hoffman family will not invite such a person in. Damon nodded and answered her. Got it. In the car, Andrew looked at his mother, who had a heavy heart, and asked, Mom, what are you thinking about? This is a good thing for us, right? Helen sighed. It's still too early to say anything good now, she said. Damon made a really big mess this time. You think Grandpa and Dad won't be angry? Helen narrowed her eyes. Andrew, she said, your grandfather is not like your father. He's not someone who can be fooled. After all these years, he'd been grabbing onto Ophelia so tightly because he didn't want to hand over any of the Hoffman family fortunes to his son or his family. Andrew said angrily, Don't tell me he still wants to leave the property to an outsider. Helen clenched her jaw. That was probably what the old man was thinking. Mom, don't worry. The family property will be ours, Andrew said with a stern expression. Son, we have to be careful with everything. Helen Helen looked out the window. She had a nagging feeling that things wouldn't go smoothly. That night, the entire Hoffman family was flipped upside down because of Damon. Robert was so angry that he didn't want to see anyone. Elijah looked at Damon, who remained silent, and only said, You can handle this matter yourself. Madeline looked at her crestfallen brother and whispered, Damon, are you all right? I'm fine, he said. Ophelia isn't much, but she's your wife. You really did her wrong this time. I don't like that, Emily, she said. Damon sighed. You go rest. I'll sit alone for a while, he mumbled. Xavier pulled his phone tighter. Ophelia hadn't turned hers on, so he could only wonder how she was doing. He'd been concerned about Ophelia from the moment he received the news. Boss, uh, the madam still doesn't know about this, Aiden answered. Xavier thought for a moment. Since the Hoffman family wanted to be low-key in handling this matter, he wanted them to suffer the opposite. Aiden, give all of this to the media, he ordered. Aiden glanced at Xavier and immediately understood his plan. Yes, sir, he said. Then we should make some preparation. It's time for us to return, Xavier mused. Sounds good, boss. The next morning, all of New York City was discussing the gossip. Someone had spread the news that the second son of the Hoffman family and the youngest daughter of the Hill family were secretly hooking up behind Ophelia's back, and the younger sister was even pregnant. The news was reporting all about the Hill family. Richard Hill had used his first wife's daughter as a bargaining chip to marry Damon, then received Hoffman family funding for his business. And now, he had expelled the same daughter, who'd worked tirelessly, sending Hillcrest Realty into a crisis. With the early morning scandal, Hillcrest Realty was done for. Even the Hoffman family stock had begun to plummet. When Ophelia saw the news, it was already noon. She'd spoken to Xavier yesterday and had a good night's rest. When she woke up, she discovered that the world had changed. Hillcrest was facing a crisis. The world had discovered that Emily was pregnant with Damon's child. The papers also revealed they had apparently been entangled with each other for a long time. Were they planning on ending things like this? Ophelia frowned as he thought. This is outrageous. Just as Ophelia was beginning to spiral emotionally, the doorbell rang. Was Ophelia planning to confront Damon, or had she already predicted this ghastly outcome? Ophelia put down the remote control and opened the door. She was surprised to see Damon standing there. Why are you here? she asked. Damon's eyes shone with a cold light. Of course you wouldn't want me to come. I don't understand what you mean, Ophelia replied. Damon's face was filled with anger. He reached out his hand to grab Ophelia's and used his strength. Ophelia frowned in pain. Damon, what are you trying to do? she asked. Ophelia, it appears I've underestimated you. The world outside is in chaos, and yet here you are, enjoying your life of leisure. Have you been enthralled by a new man? He's got to be pretty impressive, otherwise you wouldn't be living here. Ophelia was angry. She wouldn't allow anyone to talk about Xavier like that. 
Ophelia pulled her hand back to see that it had already bruised. Damon had used all of his strength. Damon smirked. Good. You know how to resist now. Ophelia took a step back and put some distance between them. You supposed to be at the hospital right now? She asked. Oh, do I need you to look after my schedule? He asked sarcastically. Then what are you looking for me for? Honestly, Damon, we're divorced. Ophelia replied. Be with Emily right now. Damon sneered. Ophelia, you have such a big heart. You speak so calmly. You hills are despicable. So greedy, he said. Ophelia clenched her fists tightly and asked, Damon, what did you say? What? You really want to know? Damon's tone was full of contempt. Two years ago, he said, Richard begged us to inject capital into Hillcrest. At that time, what did he say? He said that I'd had an affair with you, that you liked me and even wanted me to marry you. Later on, considering that we were childhood friends, Grandpa approved, and just like that, Hillcrest Realty was safe, and I was ruined. Ophelia's face paled. She was totally unaware of this. It wasn't like that, she said. It wasn't? Damon's eyes were full of disdain. Ophelia, don't you lie. You went out with other men late at night. I was blackmailed and I was dumb enough to marry you. And you wonder why I hate you. He spat. Ophelia looked at Damon in a daze. Now, she finally understood. Why else would Damon's attitude have become so horrible towards her? I never knew about that. Ophelia wanted to explain herself. Who was the man you were going out with? What were you doing out at night? Damon asked. Ophelia's eyes were hurt. Eric and I would go out, but we were at the hospital volunteering. If you don't believe me, you can go investigate. The hospitals have records. Damon was stunned. It was actually Eric. Damon hadn't expected this. Eric had been studying abroad for two years and had left before his and Ophelia's wedding. Now that he thought about it, Damon also remembered something Eric once said about Ophelia doing him a big favor. Ophelia didn't want to talk to Damon anymore. You should go, she said. It's better to settle the matter between you and Emily as soon as possible. Ophelia, I still got one thing right. Your Hill family is despicable. Do you know how Emily climbed into my bed? He asked mockingly. He watched Ophelia shake her head. I don't want to, she said. You're going to, he shouted. Damon, please remember one thing. We are divorced. Damon was stunned. Was Ophelia going to be this cruel? So you suddenly don't need to care about your family. If you want to see the Hill family destroyed, go ahead. Stay on this path, she said. Ophelia looked at Damon in a rage. She never expected him to threaten her like that. Ophelia, I'll give you one day. I think you know what to do, he said. Damon finally took his leave. The brave face Ophelia wore in front of Damon disappeared the moment he left, and she fell to the ground. She couldn't help but tear up. Why did he throw all of his problems at her like that? Nathan hid in the dark, recording everything that happened. He sent it straight to Xavier. Xavier replied immediately. Catch her if necessary. After Ophelia cried for a while, she collected her emotions. She took out her cell phone and called Connor. Connor told her that somebody had already begun to purchase abandoned Hillcrest shares anonymously. Uncle Murph, do you know who it is? She asked. I'm not sure, Connor replied. Ophelia frowned. Someone was taking the opportunity to purchase Hillcrest. Ophelia had her portion of the shares that her mother left her. This was all she had left, and she had to hold on to it no matter what. After yesterday, Hillcrest is basically done. You'll likely go bankrupt. If you want to save Hillcrest, you can only ask the Hoffman family, Connor said. Ophelia closed her eyes. She couldn't accept it. She knew it was the truth, but she didn't want to do it. Uncle Murph, I'm hanging up now, she said. Ophelia had no idea what to do. She didn't even have anyone to discuss her thoughts with. Her phone rang. Hello, she greeted her father curtly. You finally turned on your phone. Come to the hospital now. Richard said in a commanding tone. Ophelia knew there were some things that she could never escape from. When she arrived at the hospital, she hadn't even reached the room yet when she heard Emily crying. Father, mother, I want you to be sure you're beautiful. Can I have 
Emily wailed. Ophelia pushed the door open. Ophelia, what are you doing here? Ruth reacted and pounced on Ophelia. Sharp fingernails cut Ophelia's pale face, leaving a long, bloody wound. Ophelia looked coldly at Ruth. I didn't want to come, she said flatly. Richard stepped in front of Ophelia and spoke emotionlessly. Go back to the company and deal with the crisis. Ophelia could just feel the love bleeding from Richard's cold and emotionless mouth. Wow, Dad, you're actually thinking of me now, she asked sarcastically. You're still a member of the Hill family, so you'll listen to me, Richard ordered. And if I don't, she asked, one eyebrow raised. Richard looked surprised. Are you rebelling now? Do you think that just because you have the Hoffman family on your side, you can look down on everyone else? Dad, in your eyes, I've only ever been a bargaining chip. Ophelia's face was filled with sorrow. I can't do it this time, she said. Even if you can't, you have to, her father shouted. Ophelia laughed. Quite the tone you have there. Was Ophelia going to let her father use her as a pawn yet again? Or would she finally stand up to the Hill family and do what's right? There was applause from the door. Chairman Hill, what arrogant words. Ophelia turned around and saw Helen and Madeline standing in the doorway. The procedure hasn't been done yet, Helen asked. Mrs. Hoffman, can we not discuss this right now? Richard glanced at Emily. Helen shook her head. No, the most pressing concern at the moment is this mistress and her illegitimate child. Madeline stepped forward and glanced at Emily to speak. Emily, you can't blame anyone else for acting this way. The only thing I have to say is that you deserve to die for your actions. Mom and I came here to tell you that our grandpa is furious. He said you can forget about ever joining the Hoffman family. Emily tightened her grip on the hospital bed rail. She bit her lips, hatred filling her eyes. You better pray for yourself, Madeline added with a look of disgust. Grandpa won't agree to a divorce. Emily laughed when she heard this. He won't agree with their divorce, she said. Madeline thought this woman must have gone crazy. Don't think that just because you're pregnant, you can't a member of the Hoffman family. And just grant you guaranteed permission to marry into our family, she scolded. Emily smiled. Really? What if Damon's already divorced? She asked. Emily's words made Helen drop her bag. Damon had divorced Ophelia without telling anyone? She looked at Ophelia, who had been standing silently in a corner up until now. Ophelia, you and Damon are divorced. Helen frowned. Answer me, she shouted. Ophelia glanced at Helen. Yes, she said softly. Madeline was also shocked. You and my brother are really divorced? She asked. Emily's face was full of pride. Damon and Ophelia divorced a month ago, so I'm no mistress. Helen picked up her bag with fury in her eyes. Damon really knew how to cause trouble. Things had just become much more difficult. Perhaps Emily would really turn the tables on her. No, she couldn't allow this to happen, or else her plans would all come to naught. Ophelia, how did you endure it? Helen asked with a frown. From an outsider's point of view, she seemed concerned about her daughter-in-law. However, Helen had something else on her mind. Noting the change in the situation, Madeline immediately reported it to her big brother, father, and grandfather. Ruth also put the pieces together. Mrs. Hoffman, she said, the marriage was already over. Emily is not a mistress. He and Damon are just and honorable. Helen's eyes shot daggers at the other woman. Ruth, stop pretending in front of me. I know all your tricks, she spat. Emily started rambling. I want to ask the doctor whether the baby's healthy or not. You! Helen shouted. Madeline walked up to Helen. Mom, Grandpa said we need to go home. Don't embarrass us here. Fine, her mother hissed. Ruth could feel a glimmer of hope in her heart when she heard that Elijah had ordered them to leave. She hurried forward to support Emily. 
Emily, we'll go home, too. We'll talk about everything there. Helen's eyes were full of contempt. If you go near the Hoffman family, you'll be dead before you know it. Yet you still dare to boast so arrogantly here, she cursed. Richard stepped in front of Ophelia. You go back to the company and deal with the issues there, he said. Grandpa asked us to bring Ophelia with us. Although Madeline usually liked to bully Ophelia, she wouldn't allow others to do so. Madeline stepped forward and placed her arm behind Ophelia's back. Come on, sister, let's go, she said. As she watched Madeline and Ophelia leave, Helen looked coldly at Richard. Richard, you should thank Margaret for leaving you such a good daughter. You're the one who fired her so suddenly. But now that there's a problem, you want her to go back and clean up the mess for you. Two years ago, you sold that daughter to get rich. And now you stirred up trouble and put her at the heart of it. You're some father. How can you sleep at night? Helen had hit Richard exactly where she knew it hurt. He gritted his teeth and couldn't say a word. Helen, Madeline, and Ophelia arrived at the Hoffman's home shortly before Ruth and Richard showed up with Emily. Elijah used his walking stick to sweep across everyone before his gaze landed on Ophelia. Grandpa will help you decide, don't worry, he said. When Emily saw Elijah's expression, she cowered and hid in Ruth's arms. Damon was the last to arrive after receiving the summons. He reeked of alcohol. Elijah, how do you plan to handle this matter? Ruth wasn't going to hold back. No matter what, she had to seek justice today. Elijah glanced at Ruth. Mrs. Hill, I know you want answers, but I have other things to attend to first, he said. Damon and Ophelia are already divorced, Ruth shouted. Elijah nodded. Yes. You're right, he said, but I don't think you're the victim here. Elijah walked up to Ophelia and asked, What do you want to do? All of a sudden, everyone's eyes fell on Ophelia. Her response could change this entire situation. Richard secretly gave Ophelia a meaningful glance, causing her to feel a bit disappointed. Grandfather, Damon and I are divorced. You shouldn't ask me about this, Ophelia said. Richard let out a sigh of relief. Only then did they have the time to judge. I'm just a bargaining chip for the Hill family. I'm tired of this lifestyle, Ophelia continued. In the future, I don't want to be bothered about matters regarding the Hill family. Richard's expression changed. Ophelia, so far you've fallen, he shouted. You are dead to the Hill family. Although Ophelia was mentally prepared, her heart still ached when he said it. Did you ever take me for your daughter? Two years ago, you framed me. You was lying, threatened Damon. Tears rolled down Ophelia's face as she spoke. Richard couldn't hide his violent rage any longer. He flushed red and slapped Ophelia loudly. Everyone was stunned into silence. Ophelia felt her face burning, and tears blurred her vision. Ophelia, you're not my daughter. Richard shouted. Without a word, Ophelia dashed out. When she got through the front door, Ophelia saw a tall and handsome figure standing not far from the entrance. The strong, well-dressed man wearing fashionable sunglasses opened his mouth. Ophelia, I'm here to take you home. When she heard his voice, Ophelia's tears multiplied. She ran towards Xavier as she cried. He opened his arms and waited for Ophelia to reach him. It was already hard enough for her to be able to hold out until this moment. Ophelia threw herself into Xavier's arms as if she was looking for a safe haven. In his arms, she could truly cry. Xavier hugged Ophelia tightly. Cry. It's okay. Let it all out. Ophelia's crying wasn't loud, but it carried a heavy tone. She clung to Xavier's jacket. Damon and all the others saw this scene unfolding when they chased her out. A man they'd never seen before had his arms around Ophelia while she sobbed loudly. Damon clenched his fist. Who are you? Let her go! Through his sunglasses, Xavier looked at the Hoffman family approaching him, and his eyes were filled with disdain. Since you all don't want her, she'll be coming with me. Xavier's voice wasn't loud, but it was just enough for them to hear. He pulled Ophelia a little closer in front of everyone. Who are you to take Ophelia away? Damon threw a fist at Xavier. 
Xavier dodged him, but Damon still managed to knock the sunglasses off of his face and onto the ground. When they saw Xavier's appearance, everyone was shocked. What connection did Xavier have with the Hoffman family? What would happen if the Hoffmans found out about Ophelia and Xavier's marriage? Xavier looked coldly at Damon. His eyes were filled with disgust. Ophelia closed her eyes. She didn't want to deal with any of them. She believed that Xavier would help her, so she just had to trust him. She wrapped her arms around Xavier's neck and buried her head in his chest. Damon stared at Xavier with a cold expression. Was this man Ophelia's new partner? He had the aura of a king, and he gave off a sense of dominance. Damon was jealous of how dependent Ophelia was on him. Who would have thought that she would have such a delicate side to her? Who the hell was this man? He'd gotten through to her in ways Damon hadn't. Damon said indignantly, Who the hell are you? Xavier revealed a faint smile. You'll know soon enough, he said. After Xavier said that, he looked at the crowd standing not far away and moved to leave with his arms around Ophelia. As Xavier turned to leave, Elijah walked over, leaning on his walking stick. Wait a minute. Elijah became even more excited. Is that you? Xavier didn't answer. He just urged Ophelia forward. Robert and Helen were still in shock. They looked at each other and seemed to confirm what had just happened. It was Andrew's first time seeing his parents so taken aback. It was also his first time seeing his grandpa lose his composure and chase after someone. As he pondered it, he had a faint idea in his heart. Could it be that this man was... Elijah couldn't help but sigh as he turned around and walked back into the house. Helen followed Grandfather inside. She couldn't breathe. It was as if everything was spiraling out of control. The remaining three members of the Hill family were also unable to recover from their shock. Who was that man? Just the way he stood told them that he was no ordinary person. Ruth looked unconvinced. How could Ophelia have anything to do with this man? Emily could feel her mother's resentment. Mom, she started. Ruth turned her head to glance at Emily before she finally came back to her senses. Yes, the important matters of the day were not resolved yet. Richard, we have to deal with Emily first, Ruth said. Richard also retracted his thoughts. From a glance, he could tell that this man was powerful. If he was connected to Ophelia, maybe he could help Hillcrest out of this difficult situation. When he turned around and saw Emily's pitiful appearance, he frowned. Emily's case was more important to deal with at the moment. Damon stood frozen in place, watching Xavier leave with Ophelia. He was beyond belief. Mr. Hoffman, we're not done yet. Richard went up and reminded Elijah. From the moment Elijah saw Xavier, he was ecstatic. Nothing else mattered. Xavier had returned. This was more important than anything else, and his years of waiting had not been in vain. Let's talk inside, he said. Elijah's mood wasn't as heavy as before. He didn't care how this situation ended. Elijah walked to Damon's side. Go inside, he instructed. We still have to settle this matter. Damon's gaze fell on Elijah. Grandfather, who was that man? He asked. You seem to know him. Elijah didn't deny it. He only said, Go inside. Grandfather, who is he? How can he take her away? Damon wouldn't relent. Elijah looked straight at him with disappointed eyes. Damon, you did the wrong thing this time. You had no idea how to cherish Ophelia at all. You don't even know what you're missing. Damon was stunned. Grandpa was not in a good mood right now. Elijah shook his head in disappointment as he saw Damon's thoughts racing. Let's settle this first, he said as they headed inside. In the car, Xavier held Ophelia in his arms and tilted his head back to look at her pale face, but he still couldn't help but frown. He was relieved that she was finally able to cry. It was far better than holding back the pain in her heart. He held Ophelia tighter, pulling her closer to him. Ophelia had fallen asleep after they got in the car. Her face still had the traces of tears, and her eyes were red and puffy. If it was any other woman, Xavier would have been embarrassed. But he thought Ophelia was beautiful, an indescribable kind of beauty. Aiden, who was driving, would occasionally peek at Xavier and Ophelia. He was used to seeing Xavier's cold and serious face. 
Now he saw a face full of deep love and gentleness. He wasn't used to it. He'd even questioned if the man in the car was still Xavier. Always conscious of Aiden's actions, Xavier said, Concentrate on driving. Yes, sir. Aiden straightened up in his seat. Surprisingly, Xavier did not criticize him further. Ophelia stirred a little as if she wasn't sleeping well. Xavier helped her get comfortable. Aiden was really curious about this woman. However, it was precisely this kind of person that had earned Xavier's favor, and even his love. After getting off the plane and receiving the report, he immediately rushed to the Hoffman Manor. This place was taboo for Xavier, but he still went for Ophelia. Aiden didn't expect Ophelia to be Damon's ex-wife. What kind of evil fate was this? And Xavier actually married her. Aiden couldn't make sense of such a messy situation, but he knew that Xavier was not a person who acted impulsively. Boss, if your grandfather finds out about this, he is definitely not going to be happy. Aiden couldn't help but speak up. Xavier didn't seem to care at all. It's not like I did anything unforgivable. But her identity is sensitive, Aiden said. Xavier's expression changed when he heard that. Her identity is not sensitive at all. She's just my wife right now. Aiden didn't say anything more. He was wondering if Xavier and Ophelia's marriage would hurt the Hoffman family. Was Xavier in too much trouble, or was it better to hide? Matters of love were complicated. He parked a car in front of the villa. Aiden got out and opened the door for Xavier. Xavier carried Ophelia out of the car. His movements were gentle, and he was afraid of waking Ophelia up. As he watched Xavier carry Ophelia in, Aiden couldn't help but sigh. Hopefully, this Ophelia wasn't the bane of such a great man. Sir, Aiden responded to a call coming through a small earpiece. Yes, he's been doing quite well these days. The young lady actually isn't bad, he said. I don't think my boss would choose the wrong person. Aiden smirked. Sure, now you've learned to speak for others. I have eyes, so I don't need you to explain it to me. With that, Aiden walked into the mansion. Who was the master that Aiden was talking to? And why was Ophelia treated as a secret to be kept? Xavier emerged from his room after he tucked Ophelia into bed. Aiden and Nathan were both waiting for him in the living room. Boss, Aiden said. After Xavier sat down, he looked at the two people standing in front of him. You have something to say? His magnetic voice carried a sense of majesty. Aiden nodded. Boss, you showed your face in front of the Hoffman family. That's not good for what we're planning. Xavier leaned back on the sofa, admitting to himself that it was slightly impulsive. However, when he heard that Ophelia had been brought there, he didn't have time to think about it. Today's consequences are my problem. Boss, our plan will change because of this. Aiden was worried. After all, they'd been waiting for nearly 20 years for this. They hadn't allowed a single mistake to occur thus far. Xavier understood Aiden's worry, but life inevitably had accidents. He and Ophelia were an example of that. They hadn't known each other for long, yet he felt as if they'd known each other for years. At first, he admitted that he had a different purpose. But after becoming a part of Ophelia's life, that thought seemed to have disappeared. Xavier said with a smile, What's life without a few challenges? Aiden and Nathan were both stunned. They didn't seem to understand Xavier's intentions at all. Boss, are you saying... Whatever you think. Xavier answered. Actually, we could just wait for them to come knocking on our door. Wouldn't that save us more strength? After Aiden heard that, he thought about it. He thought that it did make some sense. Xavier stood up. All of us should get some rest. I think there will be someone coming soon, he said. Yes, sir, Aiden said. Xavier stopped him before he could leave. Boss, do you have other orders for me? Your work has been exceptional as of late. From now on, you'll be in charge of Ophelia's safety, Xavier explained. He nodded. Yes, sir. Aiden and Nathan walked out the door and headed towards the villa next door. This villa was where Aiden and Nathan lived. But more importantly, it was Xavier's command center. All kinds of intelligence and information were funneled through the equipment in this building. The living room was filled with all sorts of monitors and computers. Some were connected to the headquarters. Some were connected to the external networks. And all of it looked advanced. 
Xavier had bought two villas, one for daily living and the other for use at the command center. Ever since Elijah had seen Xavier, his heart had been racing, especially those bluish gray eyes. If he was right, he really had returned. After all these years, he was finally back. In other words, his wish could now be fulfilled. Elijah had instructed his trusted aides to investigate Xavier. He had a strong feeling that he was definitely not wrong. It had to be him. Although his appearance was different, his eyes couldn't be wrong. However, he seemed to be connected to Ophelia, and the two of them didn't seem to just be friends. If that was the case, then why did he come here today? Elijah had countless questions that he wanted to ask Xavier in person. For the first time in months, Robert and Helen sat in the same room. For the past ten years, their relationship appeared harmonious and loving. In reality, they'd been separated for a long time. Helen, who was wearing silk pajamas, sat on the edge of the bed and looked at Robert with her arms crossed. You should know why I called you here today, she said. Robert nodded. Helen, are we really going to keep doing this? He asked. Did I do something wrong? Or are you going to tell me the truth? Helen could not tolerate Robert's deception. He sighed. Helen, what can I do for you to forgive me? He asked. Helen sneered with mockery in her eyes. You've done so many shameful things and you still think you can earn forgiveness? She asked. Robert, if you want me to stand by your side, then tell me the truth, Helen demanded. Helen, I have my reasons for what happened that year. Robert lowered his head. Helen's heart was set on fire. She knew the truth ten years ago. She just couldn't swallow her anger. Whose child is Damon? Helen finally asked the question that had been on her mind for the past ten years. Robert was stunned. Helen, how did you know? He had always thought that he had hidden it well. Which woman gave birth to him? Helen didn't beat around the bush. I've never done anything to embarrass you. Robert was about to raise his hand and swear. Helen didn't believe him. I've been raising your lover's child for 28 years. Let me tell you, I won't give him a single cent of Hoffman's family money, she seized. Robert agreed. Of course not. Helen almost didn't believe that she'd heard it. However, she quickly adjusted herself. Can you really agree? She asked. Why don't you believe me? Robert answered. The inheritance must belong to our son. Helen, of course, didn't believe him. Aren't you afraid of being wronged by your second son? She asked. Helen, I just told you. Damon is not my son, he said. She felt like he was playing games. You gave him the name Hoffman. You'd better explain the whole thing to me quickly. Twenty-eight years ago, Helen had a hard time giving birth, and her newborn son died within a day. Helen was absolutely devastated. So, in order to cheer her up, Robert acquired a child from who knows where, and this child was Damon. It was a secret between them, and Helen was fond of her son. Four years later, Helen became pregnant again and gave birth to their daughter, Madeline. In the blink of an eye, 18 years had passed. Helen had devoted all of her efforts to her three children. Having two sons and a daughter, Helen felt that she was the object of everyone's envy. However, on Damon's 18th birthday, Helen discovered a secret. A woman came to Robert in secret, saying she wanted to have a look at her son. Robert comforted the woman by saying that Damon was also his son, so of course he would not treat him unfairly. Robert said a few warm words of comfort and dismissed the woman. Helen had happened to see him. Only then did she feel that she'd been cheated for 18 years, that she'd worked so hard to raise Robert's lover's child. From then on, Helen treated Damon coldly, giving him disrespect and nothing more. She hated this illegitimate son. Helen was shocked to hear Robert's explanation. She'd hated him for ten years, and now he was telling her that she'd been wrong. He'd been making life difficult for no reason for a decade. Damon was the illegitimate son of Tyler Quinlan and the singer. At that time, Tyler was about to become the secretary of the New York City Mayor's office so he couldn't afford to make any mistakes. But he'd had an affair with a nightclub singer. Now, 28 years later, 
Tyler Quinlan was the mayor of New York City. Because Tyler Quinlan's identity was sensitive, the woman didn't ask him to share the responsibility. She just gave birth to Damon alone. In the end, Tyler could only turn to Robert, hoping that he could help. Helen had just lost a son, so Robert helped Tyler and brought Damon back with him. Damon is Tyler Quinlan's son? Helen was shocked. Helen had opened up a Pandora's box. What other secrets was Robert hiding from her? Robert nodded. Yes, he replied. Helen never would have guessed that the son she raised for 28 years was the son of a politician. Robert, you let me believe the worst. Although Helen let go of the knot in her heart, she didn't forgive Robert. No wonder the Hoffman family gets to influence government decisions. Because you and Tyler have an understanding. Helen, now is not the time he's returned. We have to figure this out, or we really won't get a single cent of the money, he said. With Robert's reminder, Helen could only put the matter away for the time being. Perhaps they could still use Damon in the future. Was that really him today? Helen asked. Back then, she'd only just married into the Hoffman family. Robert wasn't sure. I'm not certain either, but I don't think the old man would be wrong. If it really is him, then he only has one purpose for coming back this time, Helen said. Robert nodded. Although that was nearly 20 years ago, he still vaguely remembered the scene of the beautiful woman bringing a 10-year-old child to the Hoffman family. The fate of their family could have been overturned that day. Not long after, they heard that the woman died in an accident, and her son disappeared along with her. Robert had a plan in mind. Helen did, too. She said, Robert, that person seemed to be close to Ophelia today. Yes, Robert agreed. Seeing how dependent Ophelia was on him, the relationship between the two of them couldn't be ordinary. Do you think Ophelia was his spy? Helen voiced her suspicion. Robert shook his head. It didn't look like it. Ophelia was, at most, Richard's chess piece. Helen nodded. With Ophelia's personality, she wouldn't be able to do anything that big. How do we solve Emily's problem? Helen asked. Today, Elijah had to excuse himself to rest and send the Hill family off. However, this matter had to be resolved. Robert sighed. How could Damon be so stupid to get involved with Emily? He said. I think this is a trap set by Ruth and her daughter. Their goal was to have Emily replace Ophelia in the Hoffman family. I know Ruth's tricks. Helen had a look of disgust on her face when she mentioned Ruth. I'm just saying, I don't want Emily to step foot on the Hoffman family's doorstep again, Helen added. Back then, she'd stopped Andrew from marrying Ophelia because she didn't want her son to be related to the Hill family. That was why she made Damon take the fall. However, things had gone far beyond anyone's expectations. Helen, don't worry. I'll take care of it, Robert reassured her. When Helen heard Robert's words, although she felt a little more at ease, she couldn't believe him completely. He had deceived her for so long, and she was unable to wholeheartedly believe him right now. So she would still follow her plan. She only wanted what belonged to the Hoffman family. Nothing else was important. Robert left the room and returned to his own. Helen called her oldest son up to update him. Andrew said over the phone, Mom, I think it might be more helpful for us to marry Damon and Emily. No way! Helen denied it without even thinking. Son, you don't know what Ruth is up to. If her daughter were to marry into the Hoffman family, then she would find a way to ensure the Hoffman family fortune would be split with her. Mom, I'm the one who's deciding the future of the Hoffman family. Son, you must listen to your mother on this matter. Years ago, Ruth was able to kill Margaret. Her methods weren't simple. Only Richard, that idiot still can't see Ruth's true face. I really want to see how he will react after he finds out the truth, she explained. Then what do we do now? Andrew asked. We wait, Helen answered. Let your father take the lead, and we will sit and wait for things to work out in our favor. Although Andrew was unwilling, he could only wait. After all, he really didn't know much about Xavier. In the backyard, Madeline set up a cup of tea on the table. Damon looked up and saw his sister sitting down next to him. Brother, don't mind if I join you, Madeline said with a smile. When Damon saw his sister, 
A wry smile appeared on his face. Seems like you're the only one willing to talk to me now. Madeline saw through Damon's thoughts. Damon, you actually like Ophelia, don't you? If he didn't like her, he wouldn't have reacted like that today. Especially when he saw that man holding her. I don't know, he said. Madeline looked at Damon. Brother, this time you really did wrong. That Emily is bad news. Well, I know that. I was too confident in myself, he admitted. Do you want me to send someone to teach her a lesson? She asked. Mads, you really don't have to do that. Madeline raised her head to look at the night sky. Fine. I feel like everyone in this family is weird. Always something to hide. Damon was aware of this, especially when he saw the man ushering Ophelia away. Everyone was curious. Who was this person? And why did he draw such a reaction? Madeline continued. Damon, that guy was this afternoon. His grandpa, mom, and dad knew him. And even our big brother seemed to know who he was. In his family, only the two of us are left in the dark. It's like we're unimportant. Madeline, don't think too much, he said. Damon also had the same thought, but he didn't say it out loud. Madeline turned around and glanced at Damon. Hey, she said. If you like Ophelia, then go after her. I won't be mean to her anymore. Do you think she'll return? He asked. Madeline didn't answer him. She had her own thoughts. This family was too repressed. Brother, you should get a good night's sleep, she said. After Madeline left, Damon fell into deep thought. Damon, indeed, had feelings for Ophelia. Was he starting to regret his decision to divorce her? I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.